enjoying the easy listening Country Western Tuesday. Doing a little testing of the mic here. Appreciate the patience. Test, 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 test. Test, one, two, three, test, test, test. Back to your regularly scheduled morning music. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. Welcome to the show. 
Hi, y'all. It is, uh, I think it's not going to rain today. It's supposed to, but it rained yesterday. And so I think it's not going to rain today. But again, on tomorrow, they say Wednesday. So L.A. is okay today for now, except for the illegals. It's raining illegals everywhere. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773. 888-77-JESSE. J-E-S-S-E. Jesse. My biblical question for this weekend is a doozy. Everywhere I go, people are like, I like the biblical question. I like that. It made me really think, they say. And that's what I want to encourage you to do, to think for yourself. Don't just take any word at anything. Amazing. What is hell? What is hell? What is hell? Amazing, huh? We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And um, if you're busy, because a lot of you are busy, we're heard around the world by everybody and their mama. I'm growing my Amerifro back. We'll see how long that lasts. But I'm growing my Amerifro back. What the? Amazing. Amazing. So if you're busy and you're not able to sit and watch the show as it's happening live, you of course you can podcast, but you can also listen to the show while doing what you're doing, whatever it is that you're doing. It's not what you look like, what you're doing, what you're doing. It's what you're doing when you look like you're doing what you're doing. What the? You can be listening on your iPhone or iPad anywhere in the world. Even the Chinese nationalists, nationalists that coming across the border illegal. Y'all, well, y'all, don't the Chinese own everything anyway? Y'all can be listening on your cell phone. You already know that. You're probably already doing it. By calling the listen line at 641-793-1500. And follow us on social media. Social media, like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe. And y'all know what to do with that as well, right? What the... Gail P. Talk on X and Jesse Lee Peterson on Instagram. To donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk or rebuildingtheman.com. All right, rebuildingtheman.com. It's Tuesday. And for the new listeners who might not be aware of Tuesdays, we take all calls, but it is always country and western Yeehaw. Tuesday. Yeehaw. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to what me. What the? Let the dolls out. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Who let the dolls out? Amazing, right? Um, before I get to your calls and super chats, I, I um, I've noticed that in my country, America, that uh, Constructed guidance has is ending rapidly. If you try to point someone in the right way, you are hated for it. But if you point them in the wrong way, you're glorified for it. Isn't that amazing? 
It's amazing my country has changed like this. But I understand it. I'm saying these things, but now I understand. Before, I didn't understand why it was happening, but I do now. And above all things, get an understanding. Get an understanding. I now understand Some of you, especially millennials, and maybe, and, and, and these, y'all, you don't even know that, probably don't know that this is possible, or may have heard about it, and then somewhere along the way. But in the good old days, school teachers were allowed to spank you with a paddle if you disobeyed the teacher or acted up in class or whatever. And they didn't need a permission to do it. And it wasn't like they were mean and nasty with it. You can't take that risk now with the teachers because they're no good, but it's not, they weren't being mean. They used to paddle you. Have you ever gotten paddled with a paddle in high school or in, in school period? Huh, sir? No, sir. We need to bring that back. What <laughs> <laughs> <Right> the? <there. laughs> Instead, had you heard that when we were growing up, they used to do it? Yeah, I heard that. My mother would tell me about that, and yeah. she went to a Catholic school on top of it, so it was real bad. As Joel Friday say, make spanking great again. <laughs> but nowadays, it's the other way around. The kids are, are spanking the teachers, beating up and fighting with the teacher like they're on the schoolyard playground. That's amazing to me. If you try to point them in the right way, you're hated for it. And that's why you have to let other people's children just suffer and die. You're not yours. And if the parents don't care enough about their own children to take care of them, why should you? You know what I mean? You didn't make that baby. It's not yours, and you're not responsible. And ain't no such thing to take a village. That's another made up lie. Talking about constructive guidance, according to Rumble.com, Ring Kendall, Ring Kendall hit a nerve with the social media mob by teaching children to be respectful to the police. Why is this from X? How you doing, sir? Doing good. First thing I want to do is already have my stuff ready, okay? Yes, sir. You don't want to get to the, the freaking car, and when he gets to the car, you got to go fumbling around looking for stuff, right? Regardless of whether they should or shouldn't feel unsafe, that makes somebody feel unsafe. You fumbling around because things happen, right? Yes, sir. So when they get there, the first thing you want to do is already have your license ready and have your hands on the steering wheel. You understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. Have your hands on the steering wheel. Why? Because before they don't think you reach for them. You, so you're not reaching for stuff, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right, cool. And another thing I want to do. I'm going to let all my windows down, okay? I ain't got nothing to hide, right? Yes, sir. I'm going to let all my windows down in the car. And if it's nighttime, I'm going to turn the car light on so everybody, so he can see everything in the car, right? Yes, sir. We already starting the, the, the stop off great. He probably in a good mood that I done let the window down. I done turned the lights on. He probably in a better mood now, right? We're not talking smack. We're not cussing. We're not telling them what our rights is. Blase, blase, blah. We're not doing none of that. You understand? Yes, sir. We're trying to get home. <laughs> What's wrong with that, right? I mean... Teaching the children how to respect the cops and how to be stopped. It should be already taught in the home. The parents set their children up to overreact when the cops stop them by telling. They're teaching them at home what to expect, what to do. You are black and be scared and be ready. This guy is teaching them the right thing. But if the parents were right, they wouldn't have to teach the children that. They would automatically know that. No one ever sat me down or anyone I know down and tell them, well, when the cops stop you, here's what you should do. But over the years, I do know, and I remember when I first started my nonprofit 34 years ago or so, um, the, the parents, the, the black representatives and some of the parents were teaching the children that the cops hated them, and that you are black, and when the cops stop you, it's racist. So the kids are already mad because they, in their mind, 
which is not their own, by the way, they'll think it were the cops stopping me because I'm black. My parents said it. The representative said it. You should have to teach the kids this. But this man is teaching that, and the folks got mad. Because they don't want, they don't want the children to be right. They want them angry. They want them violent. They want them out of control. They make money when these kids act that way. You get governmental programs and DI, DNI, whatever. You make a lot of money when the blacks are violent. And they go in your pocket, not even the kids' pocket. That's amazing. That's right on to the guy that's trying to teach them that. And I want to know. I want to know. What's wrong with picking cotton? I have, and I know, and I, I would tell my producer, Sean, this morning that I know there's a stigma on picking cotton now. But it's a made-up stigma. And the, and the traders have made that look bad because they wanted to look like slavery and the blacks are suffering. And they're doing that for personal gain as well. They want to try to make racism exist and so they can get money from that. Programs and things like that. Speaking events and stuff like that. I never thought of picking cotton as a stigma. And I grew up doing it. I grew up picking cotton, right? And not once did I hear my grandparents or my parents or, or the other people that lived on the plantation and worked in the cotton field with us, not once did I hear them say, oh, this is, a, this is a stigma. They were just going to work and trying to pick as much as possible so when they weight the cartons at the end of the day, they can make as much money as possible. They never thought of it as a stigma, but you've been lied to and made to believe that that's what it is because you're gullible. You've been lied to about picking cotton. Isn't that amazing? And now it's a stigma. And it's not for, it was a job. It was like cutting grass or anything else that you did. It's a job. It's like going to work at a car dealership or, or building cars or whatever. It was just a job. It wasn't thought of as this way. You've been so brainwashed that it's hard. Picking cotton is not a stigma. And what happened was, just like they do with everything now, when they saw computerizing everything, they made machines that would pick cotton. It, it would go faster. I guess it cost less or whatever, but, and then people had to stop. They moved away or they got, went to the city, got manufactured job or something, but it was never a statement. You've been lied to. I'm telling you that because I picked the cotton. And I, I may buy a plantation and take everybody back so they can pick cotton and learn how to work and be proud of working, not ashamed of working, no matter what kind of work you did. Here's a, 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 from ABC, a black farmer looked to rethink the stigma of picking cotton. Watch this compilation. And just like that, Cotton planting season has begun. My name is Julius Tillery. I'm the founder of BlackCotton.us. I'm a fifth generation cotton farmer from Northampton County, North Carolina. You're trying to change the brand of cotton within black culture. Absolutely. It is important for us as a, as a black owned family farm to be able to support our community through our products, such as our green leafy vegetables and our cotton. We are from an area that raises a lot of cotton, so we wanted to make cotton something that we could be proud of. Cotton is our culture. 
And Julius came up with this idea of taking his cotton and turning it into a raw product. For us to actually get the cotton out the field, we still had to do it by hand, but we cut them down and stuff them in boxes. We could either break it down in bowls, we pull the cotton out to make husks, or either we will use the cotton and we'll clean it by hand and we'll turn it into some bouquets, we'll turn it to a reef, we'll turn it into a vase arrangement, uh, and we also we make husk jewelry with it as well. A lot of times we're raised to believe that we don't have opportunities that close to us or that we have to go out to find them. And that may be true, but sometimes if we look around at what's around us and the assets around us, we can be able to build opportunities and connect with people all across the world. If I don't create a new history for us, it will always be a bad history. So I, I think it's really important that the work I do to help foster a better ideal around cotton is important. Wow. Amazing. God bless that man. Right on. When I see that, the tractor, the farmland out there, the cotton, I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I wish I was a Dixie. Hooray, hooray. Way down yonder, Dixie. Hooray, hooray. Man, that bring back memories. See how relaxed those guys are and they love what they're doing and it's just natural. And it ain't, it ain't about racism. It just, it just fell off the horse. Always fail, but uh, it's not about racism or any of that. That's how it was, folks. You've been lied to. It was like that. Right on, Mr. Farmer. I love that. Isn't that amazing? Not all this mess that you see now. Everything and everybody is made to be wrong. They take everything that's good and they turn it into something bad and you believe it. You just believe it because you're a dummy. You just believe it because you're not a free thinker. And you act on it. That's crazy. I love that so much. I want to play it one more time and then I'll take y'all call. Hassan, let me know who you put it. Get it ready again. He's taking the stigma out of picking cotton. Isn't that amazing? This is from ABC, Black Farmer. I really just love this. Because that's how it was when I was growing up. But how can you convince someone that it was like that when they've already been brainwashed to believe something else? Once you believe a lie, it's hard to believe the truth. Do you have to want to believe the truth in order to believe the truth once you believe the lie? I want to one more time to show you something that is amazing. This is my first time seeing it. My producer was telling me about it, but it's my first time seeing it. This is from ABC. A black farmer, look, and God bless these guys. That is, it's so home-like, it make me homesick. Make me want to go back to Alabama. This is from ABC, a black farmer looked to rethink the stigma of picking cotton. Watch this compilation. It's coming. It's amazing. And just like that, cotton planting season wow. has begun. My name is Julius Tillery. I'm the founder of BlackCotton.us. I'm a fifth generation cotton farmer from Northampton County, North Carolina. You're that trying house? to change the brand of cotton within black culture. Absolutely. It is important for us as a, as a black owned family farm to be able to support our community through our products, such as our green leafy vegetables and our cotton. We are from an area that raises a lot of cotton, so we wanted to make cotton something that we could be proud of. Yes. Cotton is our culture. And Julius came up with this idea of taking his cotton and turning it into a raw product. For us to actually get the cotton out the field, we still had to do it by hand, but we cut them down and stuff them in boxes. We could either break it down in bowls, we pull the cotton out to make husks, 
or either we will use the cotton and we'll clean it by hand and we'll turn it to some bouquets, we'll turn it to a wreath, we'll turn it into a vase arrangement uh, and we also we make Huss jewelry with it as well. A lot of times we're raised to believe that we don't have our I had to stop it because it's shaky. I don't know why, but we'll get this straight out. Amazing, though. I like what they're doing. 888-7753-773. Let me go to Kelly, a first-time caller out of Washington State. Kelly, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Oh, thank you so very much. I'm so thrilled to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of specific questions. Um, what does slut maker mean? What does slut maker mean? Yes. It's yes, uh, men who have sex out of wedlock. They're slut makers because they're turning a woman into a slut. And women who have sex out of wedlock are sluts. Interesting. Right, um, I would like to, uh, uh, something else if I may. I'm sorry? I was raised in, you, a, mili I was raised in a military home. And so we had um, a white couple, we had a black and an Asian couple. We, it, it was all, den all denominations where we lived. So we greeted everyone as yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. Right. I did not know that there was any difference. My first encounter with prejudice was in the sandbox at our housing playground. It was dinner time. Yes. All the different moms are calling their families in for dinner. I mean, How old are you now? Accent. Oh, right now I'm uh, sixty. Thank you for asking. Your sister, right on. Yes. Um. And so everybody took turns, like the, the Korean mom. Um. I usually do imitations here, but I have to try throat. And when it came down to the African American mom calling her child in, she would go out, get your black ass in here. I mean, it's like <laughs> it got quiet. Look around. Who is she talking to? And the kid gets up to, you know, go home now. He's black. We don't know. He was, what is black? We don't know. It's something new. Do we like it? Do we not like it? I'm saying that a lot of times that is instilled in your children by some others. Yeah. Let me Why? say this to you, um, Kelly. It, I don't know. Yes, Kelly, Kelly, let me tell you this. You're, you're not coming. We can't hardly understand what you're saying. I, I think I heard you say I'm you so had a sore throat. Will you hold on and see if we can work it out or maybe call me at another time when you're feeling better? Oh, can, I, can I do that? I certainly would. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, call me anytime you want. I have several more questions. Okay. I will. Thank you so very much. You're, have a good day. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye now. She said her throat, she had strep throat or something. I think that was what she said. Um, Aman out of India, her around the world, 888-7753-773. Aman, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. How are you? All is well, sir. You can hear me like loud enough, right? Loud and clear. Okay. Don't call me, sir. I'm only 23. I'm sorry? I I'm only 23. I'm younger than you, so don't call me, sir, or anything like that. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I was doing the prayer today, and I realized something. And uh, all uh, like it's like in the past, and all my childhood, I I had friends that attacked me and turned against me, and for no reason, like for no reason, they would attack me, hate me, get jealous of me, and all kinds of stuff. Like for example. Uh, and just uh, for you to understand, like, like uh, one day I, I was in eighth grade, and I was uh, there was a half an hour class of sports, like playing football. I came back to my class for drinking water, and two of my friends were sitting in front of me. I drank the whole bottle, and after drinking the whole bottle, I uh, the those two of my friends said that. Oh, we spit it in your we spit in your water bottle, and I was like, "Why would you do that? I did not do anything to you. I did not offend you or say anything bad about you, but you spit in my water bottle." I I just I, I just 
I did not get angry at them. I I just I understood like oh, okay they just did something evil and I did not get angry. I just forgot about it, whatever. And things like exam like things like this would happen all my life. And then today I realized that because I'm so 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 close to my earthly father, I'm very close to my earthly father. I'm that means I'm close to God. and because i'm close to god the devil inside others is attacking me and i was like wow all of my life i had like i i just understood that like all my life i was trying to make friends i would like give them my toys i would like give them like buy them food to make good friends and i was like <laughs> nothing worked out They literally nothing worked out and all my life i was wondering why can't i make good friends like i had a best friend who had another best friend do you still That try to my... make friends no not at all for yeah. like 5 6 years i have no i i only have one friend right now which i used to call best friend but he is still not my best friend now yeah and i want to encourage you not to try to make friends or anything because you're supposed to want for nothing. And so when you yes. try to make friends or you try to make a marriage work or you try to make this or that work, it's going to always end up in destruction. If life is yep. not working separately on its own, it's not going to work. We never we were not created to try to make anything work. Yeah, I tried that and I saw it for myself that nothing ever 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 i tried work at all it only harmed me yes absolutely no i love that do not try to make anything work no friendship no no nothing just live it naturally and if it happened i'm repeating myself but if it's not happening naturally then it's not been to be it's not going to work amazing am i even i had one question regarding this like I, as soon as i realized that they hated me for for like my connection with my father and god uh-huh. and i realized like jesus must have had a book of loads of hard time oh like, yeah jesus like suffered a lot because he was literally the light everything that christ went through because he was the light it's the same thing that every human being who return to the light to return to love who overcome anger you got to have to just no way around it the world because human beings are evil they are going to turn on you there's no way around it and and it's and on one hand it's a beautiful thing because you should be glad to see that they're turning on you so they can leave your life you can be done with them because you're dealing with evil and the darkness in them don't like the light it hate the light in you and Christ had to go through the same thing and his and he did not try to hold on to anyone or anything and that's our example we must be willing without being angry or worry or anything to let everything go don't try to hold on to anything because you will make it whatever it may be you make it your god and you will suffer yep Amazing. i i regarding this question, i had one more question like uh, how should i protect myself by not wanting mind, anything from evil within yourself thank you mama back in a moment you got to deal with it and you need good in order to deal with evil and god is good you need to return to the father and you see within you he will fight the battle for you and he will fight it without because he will show you how to deal with it and you will have no fear. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, along with nothing else. Nothing else me yourself, your children, your wife, your things, your ego, your reputation and all that. You can't care about any of that. The children of anger will use it to control you. But if you love God, he will renew your mind and none of those things will be before him. And so when they go after you, oh well, you may take my body, you may take my things, but you're not going to take my soul. And that's a true reality.
Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. Hassan and I were just talking about that. Uh, um, that soundbite we played, the compilation of the black farmers. And it was just real and natural. And it was so the way it was in the good old days. But the traders have taken that and made you think it was slavery. <laughs> made you think that it was just such a hard time for the blacks. And we need the civil rights movement, which was one of the worst things that ever happened to the black, the civil rights movement, other than abortion. Anyway, for personal shout-outs, birthday shout-outs, wedding shout-outs, anniversary shout-outs, encouragement shout-outs, congratulations, whatever it may be, I'll do them for you. Go to Cameo, C-A-M-E-O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. C-A-M-E-O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. And don't forget to subscribe and follow the JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram. The JLP Radio Network on YouTube and Instagram. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Do it now. Rush. Don't walk. Let me go to Edgar. A first-time caller out of Illinois. Edgar, welcome to the show. You're on the air. No. Oh, I think he hung up. What the? Uh, let me go to Josh out of Georgia. Georgia, oh, my mind. Uh, Josh, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Josh. Hey. It said I was calling for that biblical question. What is hell? Hell is those two videos you played yesterday with the black mom spanking her kid at school. And she the wasn't black mom spanking him. She would beat him down. Beat. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't a yeah, spank. Right. Right. And that's that. But I think the other one was worse. The one where the where she was being a mama to him. Yeah, sweeten them all up. That's, yeah, that those are two. Those are you know that's the that one. That's like what the difference between communism and socialism, because socialism is the mom that uh that that makes you know that babies the boy, and then communism is the mom that beats just beats the heck out of them all in your face. And both of those are hell. It's, that's the perfect example of hell. You know what's interesting about that and, uh, um, is that these black women are allowed to beat the children like that and treat them bo both ways, like you said, and they're allowed yeah. to get away with it. But if white women were to beat their children like that, they'll end up in jail. The kids will be taken away from them. But when the black women do it and they are doing it every day, nothing has been done about it. Right. Yeah, that that it seemed like that video like she should have been arrested for that. That's not child abuse. How's that video online like that? Man? But they're glad to see right. the black woman doing that because they need and want and need and want the blacks to be angry so that yeah. when that boy grow up and go out in the street somewhere and something happened, they're gonna call it racism. They're not gonna say yeah. this boy is angry because his mother beat him and his mother had no love. They're going to say he's angry, gotten in trouble because of racism. They, they, they want, I don't know why yeah. the people can't see that they want it to happen. Yeah. yeah. But I'll read, yeah. I, and so yeah. to sum up what you say, the biblical question, what is hell? You say is what? Long story short. It's, 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 it's yeah, that, that, I, I, I mean, I don't have words for it. Just those, those two examples of what, that video of a, of the angry mother trying to impose on her on her child, tell. And my mother was more like the the one that babies, that you know the the, the second one that where the mom was babying her. Right. And and that's in me. That's in me. That because that's why I'm <laughs> so super nice. Yeah. I'm fake nice a lot. I say please, and people. I can see people getting annoyed. Like, why is he so nice? They want they think they think since I'm black, I'm supposed to be like. The typical stereotypical black guy, right? But um, I'm more like the um, my mom babied me, so I'm more like the uh, overly nice beta male kind of a guy. <laughs> 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 and women hate nice guys like that. 
They, they hate us. They, yeah, they, they hate me. They smell you coming <laughs> well, a single. thousand miles down the road. <laughs> they can see me. Yeah, they see it. Yeah. That, you know, that's why I'm single, man. That, you know, that's my issue. So Whoa. I see that. Yeah. Do you sometimes <laughs> laugh to keep from crying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there wasn't nothing I could do about it. My mom was exactly like that. My dad, he, he, he used to beat the heck out of us trying to fix what my mom did when she babied me and my brother. Oh, only making it worse. You know? And it made it worse because yeah. he did with anger. Yeah. So he was scarier than uh, that, that woman beat because my dad was beating me with, like, uh, with a man beating you is different, you know. Instead so, of correcting your mother and keep her away from you guys. Yeah. Amazing. Yep. Well, Josh, I appreciate yep. that, and I'll put my little two cents in on Sunday. All right. If the Lord is Sounds willing good. and the creek don't rise. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. All right. Thank you, man. All right, buddy. 888-7753-773. Uh, let me go to Sarah out of North Carolina. Sarah, welcome to the show. you on the air. Hi, Jesse. This is Sarah. So hey, I Sarah. was a former... I'm <laughs> doing well. I was a former teacher, and I heard your segment last week about how the officers on campus are beneficial to the students, and I would like to offer a different perspective. Um, due to the Obama Eric Holder policies, police officers cannot operate as they should. So I feel they were actually worse for the campus because the students are allowed to disrespect them. They're allowed to hit them, fight them. So as a result, uh, the students have a diminish um, attitude towards law enforcement, they're more likely to be defiant, okay? And so outside of the school system, a police officer would just, you know, manhandle these kids, you know, if they were to be defiant or try to resist arrest. But on campuses, they are not allowed to operate as good. They cannot prosecute. They cannot enforce the crime. Students are allowed to bring drugs on campus. And there's very little that can be done. So what are, the, what are the teachers supposed to do to protect themselves from the black kids? They, uh, I think the best thing, well, <laughs> it's very nuanced, Jesse. So uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but a lot of teachers on the campuses have a lot of mental health issues. Some of them are brought about from the stress of the job. So right. they have anxiety, they have depression. So when people say to arm the teachers, I don't even know if that's a good idea, if they're depressed and well, have how anxiety. how are they supposed to protect themselves from the ba black kids? <laughs> they cannot, Jesse. And so they the cannot. Teachers, so should they just quit being teachers? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is because uh, well, there's very little quit. you can do. If you're, if you're not going to have the police there to protect a teacher from them, I talked to a teacher last week, and this teacher was like, you know what, I'm done. I want to know what you think about it, Jesse, but I'm done. I'm leaving. This is my, I'm giving my notice. I'm moving away my state because these kids are so bad, especially the black kids. And, <laughs> uh, and so I agree. I, I, you know, I still think they should have the police there, but I also think that, especially if you're a white teacher, you should not teach at any black school, period. Or any I school that has police. predominantly black kids because you're literally putting your life at risk. They are not there to learn. They, they are there to be violent. Jesse, they're there a lot of times because the social services, the welfare system, in order to continue to get welfare, they cannot have any truancy violations, period. Yeah. So they're going to be your 100% attendant students, and they're, giving your, they're making your life hell. I mean, they are, uh, the assaults on teachers have gone up. The yeah. assaults on the campus police have gone up. I mean, I'd like to talk to you about it in more length. It is really bad. Well, I'm, and, I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of it because I know a lot of teachers, and they're, they're quitting. They're moving into either homeschooling or private schools or, or different careers 
because they cannot handle the black kids. The black kids are out of control. What and a when the, mess! When the good teachers and, and, leave, uh, I'm sorry. When the good teachers leave, it makes room for um, teachers who are looking to pursue their push their own agenda. Yeah. Also, and, um, they are the the mothers. They they create these bad children. And then they don't, they don't want to be bothered with those kids all day, so they send them off to the school for, as a daycare center so that they don't have to deal with what and they have they created. Commit, when they commit crimes, I don't care if the kid is Lucifer, they will defend their baby Lucifer. Yeah. They will say that my, my child would never do that, or they'll come to the school and beat up the parent themselves. Um, and yeah. I've had teachers that have gone through that as well. Black people are mess. Sarah, thank you so much. <laughs> thank You're you. I, I appreciate it. Bye-bye. What a mess. What's wrong with the blacks? Let me get to Andela out of South Africa. Mommy Africa. There's one line open, 888-7753-773. All the way from South Africa. Andela, welcome to the show. Hey, Jesse, how are you? All this well, sir. I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I think you asked the question earlier on uh, concerning uh, cotton. What's wrong about picking cotton? No, the biblical question: <laughs> What? What is hell? I- I'm seeing that you yeah, want to respond uh, to the biblical question, right? Yeah, I'm also going to that one. What uh, is but hell? I, I, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Uh, and I also wanted to answer that question where you just asked randomly, what's wrong with picking cotton today? Oh, I think I today's youth, yeah, I think today's youth, they want to look cool and they, they want to look rich <laughs> or wealthy when they just literally have nothing. And then there's nothing wrong about picking cotton. It's work, it's like right. it's a job. I, mean, I guarantee you, if the blacks were able to pick cotton today, they would be a better people. <laughs> they wouldn't be angry. They wouldn't be violent. They would own their own lands. They would raise families. They would be much better off. And then the liars wouldn't be able to make pink and kind look like slavery. So the blacks would be (laughs) much better off if they were underformed today. Yeah, you're right about that. And now going back to to, to what is hell. Uh, now, Now hell is, 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 is a, is a place that actually exists. But with the new new thing now with 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 religion and and intelligence, uh, people tend to say hell is within people and all that. But I do get that, but that's a wrong way of putting it because what lives in people is evil. It's it's it's, it's evil deeds and and they are evil ways. But the actual place hell does exist. It's where these evil doers people with evil deeds, lust, and all that, they go. That's where they are being tormented and and all that. And so what is hell? Uh, Hell is a place where people doing evil deeds. And where is that? They they, they, they are being tormented. Where is that? Uh, Well, Jess, uh, I like your question. But uh, the, the Bible explains it very clear that uh, God's, uh, like God's feet, they are, they are actually deeper, like longer than, than hell, which also suggests that, even in the Bible suggests that hell is some place underneath the earth or just underground somewhere, but underneath the earth. I appreciate that. I want to respond to your response to the biblical question. But I got to wait until Sunday, so I will put my little two cents in on Sunday. Thank you, Adele. Adela. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. So, Mommy so, Africa. So, so. All right. Amazing. All the way from South Africa. Mommy Africa. Super chat. Super chat. Super, 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 super. super. Moises. Stop leaning so far over there. <laughs> <laughs> Moises bought three coffees. Oh. Uh, it looks kind of cool. No. No? Why did you get so vulnerable with Aziza on the fallen state? Beta. Scrunch face emoji. Laughing. She's the Muslim uh, polygamous gal. 
Oh, too nice. I wasn't vulnerable. <laughs> I just enjoy talking to him. What the? Thank you. Andrew Bob. Thank you, Moises. <laughs> Andrew Bob. Check out that, by the way, on the Father's Day. It was a Muslim woman, Aziza, and she was married, and her husband had another wife, and he had two wives, and he wanted another one, so she was looking for him, another wife. It was interesting. On the fallestate.tv, and I think it was like maybe two Fridays ago. Yep. Something like that. Thank you. Also on buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk, Andrew bought five saying, Jesse, I had a few questions I was wondering about. One, how does one sell their soul to the devil? Two, how does one cry out to God? And three, what does the great white hope have to say today? Thanks for everything. Uh, people sell their soul to God by not... To the devil. I mean, to the devil, not to God. To the devil by not working on themselves. They love their misery, and then they love imposing their hell on someone else because it make them, it gives them a thrill, and that thrill feels like life to think that you can hurt someone. And so they love the thrill more than overcoming the thrill. And um, what was the second one? Okay. So they don't even try to overcome. How does one cry out to God? By getting to know yourself. Pay attention to what's happening inside of you. Amazing. And what, and what does the great white hope have to say today? Let me chat. Amazing. I don't want my other great white hope to fall on the face. <laughs> Let me chat to see what the great white hope has to say. And then I tweeted, you know, I have it. Many millions between Facebook and Twitter, it's great. It's like owning a newspaper without the losses. It's incredible. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> the great white hope. Nice. Thank you. Thanks for everything, says uh, Andrew with his five coffees. Right on. Joel or Joel. He black. Per, prob- Joel may not be Joel or Joel or Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Bought a coffee. Hey, Jesse. Firstly, I would like to say that my respect for you is of the highest degree, and I absolutely love what you do. Secondly, thank you. I've just been promoted supervisor at my construction job. Congratulations. Wonder- wondering if you have any words of advice or encouragement for a first-time supervisor slash team leader. Many thanks, Jesse. Much love to you and the crew. Thank you. Be grateful. Stay calm. Don't overreact to anyone around you, any situation, and the light will guide you. It will be amazing. And don't try to be like other supervisors or bosses or whatever. Just be you. You would do an amazing job being you. Amazing. I wish you well. Congratulations. Thank you. The key bought a coffee, which is to say a super chat. Biblical question answer. What is hell? What is hell? Hell is not knowing the truth. Key emoji. Amazing. I put my little two cents in on Sunday. I should have said hell is not knowing the truth. Key emoji, because it's all caps in that part. Oh, uh, hell is not. I mean, I'll put my little two cents in on, on Sunday. Nice. Nice save. Thank you. Mac O'Leary bought three coffees. Shout out to Hassan. You talking about my hair? Hassan? <laughs> That's right. Amerifro. <laughs> I'm getting my Amerifro, not Afro, or Amerifro back. Amazing. Hostages is amazing. That's uh, one of the songs that Hassan has put out. Oh, I see. Nice. Okay, thank you. Oh, Shout out. Yeah. Aries bought a couple of diamonds. No message. Thank you. Thank you. you. WD41 bought three, me- three diamonds saying pithy. Pithy. I said it right. Yep. What did I say before? Uh, you, may have been, you may have said piffy. Yeah. I said Sunday, keep it piffy. Right. But pithy. Right, pithy. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, Stan69 with a diamond. The only cowboys and farmers I've seen are Mexican. <laughs> what what are you mean? <laughs> what? Maybe he means lately. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, thank you. And by the way, Hassan said thank you to the guy with the music. Nice. Like his music. Mac O'Leary, shout out. Yeah. Stan69 with a diamond. Whites run away from the blacks. White flight. Uh, airplane emoji. Do you blame them? What the? <laughs> <laughs> Is this a high? 
<laughs> he drank some fire water. I'm telling you, he just fell over again. <laughs> he be, they be working on a cotton field with those, uh, those <laughs> gentlemen in the clip. Is the horse exhausted. falling over or Jesse falling over? <laughs> <laughs> Jesse fell over and dragged the horse down with him. A, no, a second time. But luckily, Jesse broke the horse's fall, so the horse didn't break any ribs. Nice. Stan 69 with another diamond. Uh, Mexicans are the only ones tough enough to stay. Whites, he says, why do all farms in the U.S. only hire Mexicans? Cheap labor. But Mexicans are not as good of workers as they used to be. Right. They're not what you think. Believe me. Yeah. Pretend and they drink a lot. Yeah. They get drunk. DUI is quite common. So, uh, this cheap labor thing, I think that's from the old school, too. But thank you. C on C bought. And not all, not all, not all, not all. But most. Three coffees from C on C. Uh, Wee haw. Uh, cowboy, <laughs> straw hat, black with carrots, farmer, banjo, musical notes, emojis. I come from <laughs> Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Would you like to go to the square dance? Cowboy boot, female boot emoji. Tomorrow, love you. Pink heart emojis with flying stuff. Amazing. Thank you. Sweet home, Alabama. Country Western Tuesday. Yeehaw. Thank Sh you. Shredia bought a rumble rant. You got to know how to rumble. Biblical question. What is hell? Part of hell is trying to make yourself feel good. Looking back on my life, I see that I brought so much hell into my life trying to make myself feel good, thinking that it was the right way to live. Amazing. I'll put my two cents in on Sunday if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rock. Thank you for that. I got to take a break. Thank you all for the super chat. We have two more hours to go. And hate is coming in with the hate news. Not the fake news, but the hate news. And I'll be back in a moment. Straight to your phone calls. Now, I totally disagree with the way things are going, but you can't be angry because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to control you. They do things to make you mad so they can control you. It's like being married. And the wife would do things to make you mad or she would do things to make you feel good. And men do that to women too when they want something from the woman, especially sex. They'll make her feel good or they'll make her angry. And the woman's gonna have to say, you don't wanna be angry. You wanna speak up, you wanna disagree with what's going on, it's wrong, but do not be angry. Then you won't have fear, you won't have doubt, you won't have worries, you'll be able to see. But you gotta stay away from anger. That's why you must forgive your mothers and your fathers so that you can overcome the spirit of anger. It's a spirit and it's wicked. Nothing good in anger because it has no love, folks. You need love to defeat evil. And love is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's from God. It's his nature. A whole lot of mess going on in the world. This is the end of hour one already of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It is Country and Western Tuesday, February 27th, A.D. 2024. Stay tuned for hour two. JLP will be right back to your calls. The lines are full, guys. But first, fake news, not fake news. Uh, the world's always changing. Comment on Sense Network CNN says new findings on Antarctica's quote unquote doomsday glacier provide alarming insight over into the collapse, how its collapse could cause catastrophic global flooding. The massive glacier is roughly the size of Florida. It's melting at a historic pace due to climate change and could raise sea levels by several feet. So they say, isn't that nice? That's how the world goes. Stuff is always changing physically on the outside. Israel-Hamas war drama. The far-left female run outlet The Skim reports an active-duty airman's, air males, death underscored how strongly some Americans oppose Israel's military actions in Gaza. 25-year-old uh, queer Antifa true believer of lies, Aaron Bushnell of San Antonio. This is information per uh, independent journalist Andy No, from, not from the scam ladies. This Aaron Bushnell guy set himself on fire outside of the uh, Israeli embassy 
in Washington, D.C. on Saturday, Sunday, I mean, in what he called an extreme act of protest, quote unquote, over the Israel Hamas war drama. In a video he live streamed on Twitch, far left extremist Twitch, uh, Bushnell, Andrew Bush, Aaron Bushnell, can be heard saying he would no longer be complicit in genocide and repeatedly shouted, uh, Free Palestine! He later died from his injuries. Bushnell, Aaron Bushnell, is believed to be the second person in the United States to self immolate, that's set yourself on, set your body on fire, it, to protest that war. His death comes amid differing views on how Israel, with United States support, has responded to that conflict. Since the beginning of the war, hundreds of thousands of people have been taken to the streets in both pro Israel and pro Palestine protests. With the war in its fifth month, Americans are split about Israel's response. One poll found 50% of American adults believe Israel's actions in Gaza have gone too far, while about 50% believe the response has been about right or not gone far enough. With the evil Biden administration, there have been resignations and calls for crooked Joe Biden to evaluate the U.S.'s support of Israel. Still, one poll found that 46% of Democrats, demon rats, support crooked Joe's handling of the conflict. Another poll shows that 74% of Jewish voters support Biden's actions. All comes as amid, it all comes as divided viewpoints on the war. We've put a spotlight on crooked college campuses and corrupt workplaces. Hamas's attack October 7th reportedly killed 1,200 people in Israel. Gaza's health authorities said that nearly 30,000 Palestinians have been killed since the start of the war. As negotiations over a ceasefire continue, the U.S. is dealing with internal divisions over their handling, mishandling of the war. Ceasefire developing yesterday, Crooked Joe Biden said he's hopeful that Israel and Hamas will agree to a temporary ceasefire by next Monday ahead of Ramadan. That comes as Israel's war cabinet signed off on broad terms that include a six-week pause in exchange for the uh, release of hostages in the entry of aid trucks into Gaza and the West Bank. Yesterday, the Palestinian Authority's um, government resigned. The PA, Palestinian Authority, runs part of the Israeli-occupied West Bank. The resignation comes as the U.S. and allies have pressured the Palestinian authorities to create Palestinian Authority to create reforms in hopes that they can govern Gaza post-war. For now, the PA's government is expected to remain in a caretaker capacity until a new one is formed. What a mess. Uh, $80 million. That's how much the utility giant Southern California Edison, meanwhile here in America, will pay to settle claims related to the 2017 Thomas Fire. Anybody remember that? Which at the time was the largest wildfire in California's modern history. U.S. Forest Service sued the company because power lines went down and it ignited the blaze or something like that. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP. Hour 2. Somewhere in the world today, men have got to stand up strong, take the truth about themselves to understand what went wrong. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with li lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show today. You can get involved by calling 888-775-3773. 888-77-JESSE. J-E-S-S-E. My biblical question for this week. The biblical question, what is hell? 
what is hell? It's, it's, it's such an amazing question. It really is. We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And you can, we have, um, listen to the show on your iPhone or iPad if you're busy and you're not able to sit and watch it live. Of course, you can podcast later, but you can be listening while you're doing whatever you're doing by calling the listen line at 641 793 one five zero zero six four one seven nine three one five zero zero and to donate and have your comments read out loud go to buymeacoffee.com slash jlp talk buymeacoffee.com slash jlp talk or bond jlp on cash app bond jlp on Cash App. It's Tuesday. It's the second hour of Tuesday show. It is Country and Western Tuesday. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to me. What the? Who let the dogs out? Amazing. 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 That little town reminds me of uh, when I first moved to L.A. I drove back home to Alabama twice. And I went through Dodge City where Mr. Dillon and and Chester live. (laughs) Mr. Dillon and Chester lived in Dark City. And Dark City looked like that. They had those old wood cowboy-looking homes and things like that. It was amazing. Dark City in Kansas. It was amazing. I drove through there when I went to Alabama, and I drove back when I came from back to California. I, I really wanted to see it. It was really nice. And I grew up watching Gunsmoke. With Mr. Dillon. Remember Mr. Dillon? Remember Chester? Yeah. You don't remember Mr. Dillon? <laughs> Amazing. Chester was Mr. Dillon, deputy sheriff, and Chester was crippled. He had one leg. He had two legs, but one of had a problem. And he worked hard for Mr. Dillon. He was a good uh, police chief or well, sheriff. Let me go to Brian, uh, e, uh, Edgar. A first time caller out of uh, Illinois. Edgar, welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, Mr. Peterson. How are you doing today? All is well, Edgar. Thank the Lord. All right, all right, Mr. Peterson. So um I actually um I I guess my wife uh had called last week because uh, I had uh made some comments about her. Uh, calling her sitting daughter. Right. I'm not sure if you recall that conversation. I kind of do remember that a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, so, Mr. Peterson, um, I just uh, actually last week just uh, forgave my father after uh, 17 years of uh, no communication with him. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. So and, you, um, why didn't you talk to him in 17 years? Why did you stay away so long? Well, because I thought um, throughout the whole time that he was not calling or reaching out. So come, I come to find out that the whole time my mother was uh, actually keeping me away from him. Wow. I told you, yeah, mothers I, are evil. They are. They are Satan's daughters. And I actually uh, forgave my mother, too. And when I actually forgave her, she actually kind of just brushed it off. And she thought I was joking, but... I was that set, and I was. I told her honestly, like I forgive you, whatever it is that we went through, and I forgive you, whatever resentment that I had towards you. Right on. And she kind of um, brushed it off and laughed it off and said, like, "What are you forgiving me for? I should forgive you for whatever pain you caused me when you were a kid." You know. That's so how evil guess, she is, man. Exactly. So you know, I accepted it. I can't judge her for that. Right. I do still forgive her. But the thing I asked my father, and he, you know, I asked him, I told him, I, um, 
I forgave my mother, but I now I really want to know like what it what is it now? I'm a grown man. I have a uh, a lot of kids. Unfortunately, I had them out of wedlock, but now I am married to the woman that I had those children with. Thank God. Amazing. So I yeah. So I was just wondering, Mister Peterson, um, how I can make my life better with this um with this woman, <laughs> the devil's child, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Before I answer that, let me ask. Ask, what did your father uh, say when you went and forgave him? Well, he told me that he was, uh, first off, he was really happy um, that I was, he told me that he never thought I was going to ever reach out to him because out of um, all of my siblings, I'm only one of four with uh, three boys. And I was the only one that would always want to be with him when he was here. Uh, so he left right before my 13th birthday, but I would spend the uh, weekends over his house. I love being with him, you know, and my brother still lives with my mother. Beta. And, <laughs> Beta. Uh, so, Beta, Beta. so I guess, uh, you know, so I told, I try and tell my brother and I try to tell him, you know, the right thing from the wrong thing, which is you got to forgive your mother. And he says, man, I have nothing to forgive her for. Amazing. And I told him, I was like, would you want to ever speak to our father again? He says he doesn't, there's no need to, he forgives him at heart. And I have to, and I'm telling him, you have to forgive your earthly father. And he has to know in order to make it to your heavenly father. Right. Yeah. Well, let him, let your brother just live in hell. He loves his hell. So you go on with your life and the way you do it. And I highly suggest that you do the silent prayer every morning, every night and during the day, tr practice being present. Instead of lost in your thoughts about yesterday or tomorrow, or what has happened or what will happen, practice not doing that, and you're with God. You're in the presence of God, and he will guide you. Really, it would just automatically happen, and he would change your old nature, that ego nature, that, that pride and, and, and anger and ego he will change that because that's evil and it's not you. He will take away all that away from you and give you back his nature, which is a new nature. And with the wife, from this day forward, never argue with her. Do not argue, period. And uh, you, you state your point. Let's say she's angry or she's treating the kids in the wrong way. You just tell her to back off the kids. Work on her anger, but don't argue with her about it at all. And don't be angry at her. She can't help herself. And I'm telling you, anger, your life, I, I, I don't even have the word to express because you'll be living this life. Most people won't even know what's happening inside of you. They'll think you feel like them. They'll think you think like them, you feel like them, but you won't. It would be amazing. And... uh yeah. But just don't, don't ever argue with the devil inside of your mind, your imagination, your thoughts, or inside of someone else. So don't argue with the devil inside of your wife or anyone else. Okay, Mr. Peterson, and that's the thing that I was actually calling about. So yesterday it was, uh, so I had a long day at work. I'm getting off of work. Um, I get home, and my wife's very upset. Mind you, I keep telling her that's from the devil. Like, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be upset. We can talk it out or whatever you want to state your point. Just say it. But she got to the point where she was so upset that I guess I wasn't fighting into it or I or wasn't arguing back. Where you know I'm a I smoke cigars. I smoke a cigar daily. She went into my humidor and threw out my cigars out the window. <laughs> and, and and the thing is, like man, I, I work hard for my stuff. No. You know, yeah, yeah, Mr. Pearson. So. You know, and I and I try to tell, I try to get no reaction out of it, but it did bother me a bit. But I know feelings and emotions are evil. Right. So I try not to. And I told her, I, I honestly told her, I, I'm genuinely concerned because you're evil and I'm, you're not going to get a reaction out of me. And I know that's what you want, but you can't control or manipulate me anymore because I was a beta male before. Right. And and you're right. The reason she carried on like that, threw things out the window and all that, because the hell in her, the evil spirits in her mind and her body need to get a reaction from you in order for it to get a thrill so it could feel like a life, like so it could feel alive. 
So if she can't get a reaction from you by being nice and sweet, she gonna get a rea- she gonna try to get a reaction from you by arguing and being upset. If that doesn't work, she'll throw things out the window. She'll do whatever she can uh, to try to get a reaction. And that's what the devil does inside of all human beings. When it can't get a reaction, it go nuts. And it'll try whatever it can to get a reaction so it can feel alive. Don't fall for it. No, the devil is evil inside of human beings. Don't argue with him. Don't be nice to it. Give it no communication at all. Ignore the devil inside of other, and then watch it inside of you, and it will be taken away from you. Yes, 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 Mr. Jesse. I will do that. And then your wife, she's going to throw things at you. She's going to throw out the window. And then if that doesn't work, she's going to offer you sex. And, and if that doesn't work, she'll bake you a cake. <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing. So, so the, and, and the funny part about that is that afterward, she um she got some tickets for us, some concert tickets, and it's like this is this is not gonna bring back my cigars, <laughs> right? And I'm not upset. I was like, I'm not, I'm not upset about the cigars. I can always buy them, but I'm like, man, I aged those joints for like three years. <laughs> wow. Yep. Yeah. So. Whatever you love is what she's going to use against you. She knows that those cigars meant a lot to you. She's going to destroy those. She knows that your children mean a lot to you. She's going to destroy the kids. She knows yeah, that. She does. Yeah. She knows that you love your car. She's going to break the glass, out, uh, the lights out of your car. Whatever you love is what the devil and her will try to use to destroy it. It's amazing how that is, man. Yeah, it really, truly is, Mr. Peterson. I, and I'm just trying to, I've been trying to be a better person. I've been following you for the most part of, like, the past year. And everything that you say, I can actually, um, I, I can abide by that code because I think that's the way to go. I feel like it's uh, God over Christ, Christ over man, man over woman, woman over children. Yeah. I have five children here, and I have two kids in Mexico. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. But, and, and I love them, Justin. I truly do everything that I can in my power to work 12 hours a day. I literally, that's my only thing to go, go home, smoke a cigar, and relax. And, right you know, the wife nowadays, she doesn't even let me do that nowadays. So and I don't know what to do, Mr. Peterson. If you have any advice, I gladly take it. But here's what I recommend. Uh, when you get home again, you know how you're doing. Fine. Don't cater to her emotions. Don't cater to her mess, and you just come home and you stay calm and you. And if she's acting out once again, you say, "Hey, that's the hell in you. You need to overcome that." But don't argue with it and just take it one day at a time. And then one other thing I want to tell you: I know you love your children, and but don't love them emotionally. Do not love the children because that's not love. Emotion love is hatred. And, and the reason I'm telling you that because she will discover, if she hasn't already, that you love those children emotionally. And, and if, if all her other hell acts don't work, she will use your children to hurt you, to try to destroy you. But let's say you're not emotionally tied to the children. If she's trying to take them or hurt them or, you know, take them to court to take them from you, you won't argue with she, it at all. Yeah, she tried that, actually. And, and this is the reason why I'm calling. We try to work it out, and it's just not. she's not progressing. And she says that she was born uh, with a Christian Catholic family, that she's been to church her whole life. And I've been with her for eight years. So I'm married to her, have children with her. And it doesn't seem like anything's changing on her side, at least. Right. Yeah, but, but I don't blame her. Right, but that's the hell in her. She's evil. Yeah, but yes, but, sir. but that's I'm warning you. Do what you want. Of course, you do what you want. You do what you think is best for you. But if she want the kids, okay, you can have them. Take them, and don't don't be emotionally attached to anything. Want for nothing, and then that way, if she know that you're just gonna let them go, 
It's not going to hurt you. She's less likely to try to take your children. She's only, the hell in her, only want to hurt what's important to you. And that's why God, when you die from the ego, you die from everything that you think is important. You want for nothing. You identify with nothing or no one. And if there's nothing there, there's nothing to take that no one can hurt you. So I highly recommend you do the silent prayer so you can overcome that false emotional love for the children. And you're going to have the right kind of love, which is God love working through you for the children. And you'll be fine. Because yes, emotional yes, love is Satan working through you. That's Satan love. He's imitating God, and it's not real love. That's why it doesn't work. And that's why, thanks to you, Mr. Peterson, I do not believe in emotions. Right on. And, and, and uh, women love emotions. They're like, oh, you don't care about my emotions. You don't care how I feel. You don't cater to my emotions. They're saying, you don't care about the hell in me. You're not wishing the hell in me. You're not catering to the hell. You don't want to cater to the hell in you or anyone. Let them have their hell. So do the silent prayer, Edgar. Take it one day at a time. Watch those thoughts. And I promise you, God is working everything out for you. You can't make it happen. He's working it. Everything inside of you, he's working it out. And then your outer environment, he's working that out too. You'll be fine. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Justin. You're welcome. Let me know how it goes. I appreciate it. God bless you. You have yourself a great day. You too, buddy. It's the same hell in everyone. I was talking uh, to a guy yesterday, and, I, and it's been like one or two years since I counseled with him. Nice guy, hardworking, decent, and black. I think he's black. And... He married the wrong woman. And years ago, I said, you married the wrong woman, man. I would get out of this situation. Don't make any babies. Don't do any of that stuff. Walk away. And then I said, if you don't walk away, here's what's going to happen. And lo and behold, he did not walk away. And everything I told him that would happen, happened. And now he's trapped. Or at least he think he is. Well, I don't know if he really think he's trapped. But you're living in your, anyone that has anger is living in their hell. You're living in their, the cage of their imagination, which is Satan dwell place, right? And they're getting advice from the devil. When one thing, the devil tells you to do this, and you go and do it, and it doesn't work. And then you're like, whoa, how did I get into this? And the devil's like, oh, don't worry about it. Do this. Try this way. And you try that. That doesn't work. Because you're getting information from the same evil. You're getting information from the devil in that cage, in that prison, in that jail cell. You got to rise above the jail cell if you want the real answers to life. And don't argue with the devil when people try to hurt you, attack you, whatever. They're evil. They can't help it. Do not give them any play at all because that's what they need to stay alive, a false life. They think it's life, but they're really dead. If, if they were alive, they would try to hurt other people. So men, stop. Don't play with you, the evil devil in your wives. Uh, Jamal is out of Canada. Jamal, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Mr. Peterson, how you doing? All is well, sir. I wanted to answer the biblical question. What is hell? I believe hell is um, when you're stuck in your head, like trapped in your thoughts. It's like a constant roller coaster. One minute, the voice in your head that pretends to be you says, you're a good guy, or things are going well, or remember that good thing that happened last week. Or, and then the next day, like, or in an instant, it will turn bad and be like, oh, you remember that bad thing that happened a few days ago, a few years ago, and it makes you feel down. And just a constant roller coaster, you know, no peace. I, I think that's what hell is. Amazing. I want to respond. It's so interesting 
But I gotta wait until Sunday. But I do appreciate your response to that, uh, Jamal. And I'll put my little two cents in on Sunday. Thank you for it, man. All right, no problem. Appreciate you. You too, buddy. Amazing. 888-775-3773. A first time caller out of Illinois. Um, Jay. Jay, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm calling from Chicago to hellhole. Democrat. I call them Democrats. What a mess. You know what, I'm saying? You, what a mess we got here, man. You need to come here and run for mayor and run this Negro Brandon Johnson out of office. Man, but, that man, I don't even know. I understand why they voted for him. I, I, I didn't vote for him because he said when he was running, he was going to do everything for the illegal immigrants. You know, they try to say uh, <laughs> the, 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 the Democrats here, they say, oh, it's a humanitarian crisis. You know, but we had homeless people, citizens, yeah, ex, ex, yeah. ex uh, just citizens, man, military men out there, on military the men sleeping yeah. on the streets. Yeah. But you let all these, Ill, you should see it, Jesse. It's a big mess here in Chicago. But uh, well, what hate, I call hate, call the Democrats, uh, Democrats, 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 <laughs> the. Amazing. Demon, <laughs> not demon rat, but demon rats. Demon rat. I like that. Yeah, demon I, rat. Amazing. Demon, amazing. Hey, but look, I call for the question. What, what is, is hell? When you broke. <laughs> you be broke as hell, don't you? <laughs> I've heard that hey, term hey, before. Hey, Je- hey Jesse, you be, <laughs> and, and you be mad as hell, too, don't you? When you broke. <laughs> <laughs> That's hell, man. And, 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 and Fanny Willis, that's hell, too. Imagine waking up to her every morning. I'm that's hell. You. Imagine <laughs> that woman, female being your wife. What that's, the? What the? That's hell right there, man. I'm telling hey, you. I ain't going to hold you up, man. Hey, I've been listening to you. I'm 52 years old, man. I've been following you since the 90s, man. I'm glad to, I'm glad you got the social media page and all of that, man. I listen to you every day, man. I, you know, I um, I, I I work ride share, so I play you. I play you when I <laughs> when I guess when I know some Democrats, especially some black women, get in my car. <laughs> oh man, Jesse, you be pissing them off, man. <laughs> when, what the? It's, 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 what the? Especially when you put that a couple weeks ago when you said what do uh E Jane Carroll E Jean Carroll she said what 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 do we need men for and all yeah, that yeah. oh man them black women be so mad at you man I just be laughing I do it on purpose <laughs> amazing <laughs> <laughs> oh keep it well, up brother I will uh, and I appreciate it and I'll respond to the biblical question on Sunday thank you I appreciate that all right Jesse all right buddy. what the <laughs> what the <laughs> Amazing. Heard around the world by everybody. And if you're black, everybody and their mama. If you're white, everybody and their mama. Amazing. <laughs> Brian is out of Florida. Brian, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Brian. How you doing, sir? All is well. You're on the air. All right, so I called in about a, about a couple months ago. I told you I was just um, rekindling um relationship with my father. We had lost touch over about a decade and a half because my mama found out she was keeping me away from him and whatnot. Yeah. And then I told you, yeah. So we reconnected and everything was good. Everything's great. Me and him are like best friends now. We go shooting. He comes up to see the kids whenever he can. Now, recently after that, I gave up drinking so now that i feel up drinking i've noticed that like i don't really have no anger but when i get behind the wheel sir i can string together curse words like it's a poem or a haiku like the, <laughs> the dumb drivers like <laughs> these, 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 these drivers like they get to me and i don't know if it's anger or if it's just me overreacting but i know it's something because i'm acknowledging it you know what i'm saying right and your question so like, how is, how do I? So how do I go about overcoming that? Because my me and my wife discussed like, well, you gave up drinking. That 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 would have been where some of you know some emotional distress would have came from. But now that that's gone, where is it coming from? So I don't know if it's just dealing with stupid people on the road, or if I'm just just still hung up. Here's what you do: when that happens, just watch it. Don't. 
Okay. And, and when the, those emotions come up, don't call them you. Don't identify with it. Just see it. Just watch it, and then just calm down. But don't judge yourself. Don't let the devil tell you it's not working. You still get angry and all that. It's a lie. It's not you. And when you just watch it, be conscious of it, it, those spirits, which are evil, and there are many of them, will be taken away from you. You're doing just fine. It's not you at all. Okay. Because like I said, cause like I, 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 like I gave up the anger and all that stuff. Like I said, man, I, I lived in L.A. and stuff myself. So driving on, like, you know, the 110, everybody knows. You, you, right. Yeah, man, but don't. That is, don't there's, but just there's, watch there's, there's it. some people out there. Yeah, just watch it. And don't call it you. And you'll be fine. You have gone and you have forgiven. Now your eyes have been opened. Your heart has been changed from anger to love. And now, because what you're going to realize, if you haven't already, you were never the angry person. You were never. No, the, no, I know that that, that, that was that was the, the devil working through right. me in some and, other some other way. And the only way that he was able to to make a home in you, you thought it was you at that time, and he stayed there pretending to be you, but it was never you. And so now that you're starting to see that it's not you, it will. I promise you, man, it will be taken away. God would take away all those evil spirits. Don't worry about when. Don't worry about how long it takes. He that's endured to the end shall receive the kingdom of heaven. You'll be fine. Okay, cool. Because I always thought, like, I've been thinking the past few months, I'm like, man, I done gave up everything. I, I returned to everything. I'm like, what's all this then? Like, well, what, what, why am I so, but... That's the ego. Right, that's, a, that's the pride. That's the ego nature dying. And in order to okay. live, you must die. So the not you is dying, and the real you is coming to the forefront. You, you're, you're fine. Okay, cool. All right, that, that makes sense. But, like, I, I I just need to, like, maybe here clarify. Maybe I just wasn't. Hey, boy. Sorry, I got I got my kid trying to run into the road here. What's wrong with you, boy? Run into this? <laughs> Sorry. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it makes sense because, like you know, like once I gave up, you know, like all, like I said, all possibilities of intoxications, and you know, like I said, I went back for fully forgave. Everything came to fruition, but there was just, like I said, when I get behind the steering wheel, man. Well, the, well, the now that work, you, now that you have risen, you must die. The ego, you will die. Now that you're risen by overcoming, by forgiving, right? Now, yes, sir. The light. We'll kill the darkness. You'll be fine. It's not you. Okay, cool. All right. It's totally the saved. death of the ego. <laughs> it's not you. Oh, uh, okay. So he's not going down without a fight as long as I'm here. I'm sorry? He's not going down without a fight. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But you just watch the fight. Don't you be a part of it. Just watch it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Brian. I got to take a break. Thank you, buddy. All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate all your help. Right on. Back in a moment. We have a counseling service, and I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, and individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy. They're miserable. They have rough lives. They're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand. I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven.
Okay, welcome back. 888-7753-888-77. Jesse, J-E-S-S-E, a couple quick announcements. The Hake, H-A-K-E report is coming up at the top of this hour. Oh, no, not at the top of this hour. This is just, we're about to get to the third hour. Sorry about that. But the Hake report is coming up at 9 a.m. this morning from 9 to 11. And then after the Hake report, uh, Joel Friday TV, he black. Joel Friday TV at 11 a.m. And then at 12 noon, the American Anchor Baby. Energy given to him by God. All right. So Hake at 9 a.m. Pacific time. The guy with the good hair. I don't know if y'all been listening to Hake's show. Y'all sure he's on fire lately. Don't mess with Hake. He ain't scared. Oh, just so scared. Amazing. Uh, and then the uh, Joel Friday TV and uh, the American Anchor Baby. All right. If you need counseling, we have the best counseling service on this side of heaven. By phone, Skype, or walk in. I do it myself individual, family, or whatever, go to rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com, or call 800-411-BOND, 800-411-2663, all right, to make an appointment. Let me go quickly to Amanda, a first-time call out of Florida. Amanda, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi. Hey, Amanda. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. Speak um, up a little bit. Okay. Can you hear me okay right now? I do. Okay. So I just wanted to say um, that I am very appreciative of everything that you're putting out there. Just recently, my mom was the one that actually um, told me about you. And sometimes I'm a little skeptical. <laughs> of the things that she wants me to listen to. Right. Um, and I, but I gave you a chance. <laughs> and you totally grew on me. <laughs> I totally what? And, um, <laughs> you said I totally what? And you, you grew on me. Oh, like, the okay. The more I listened to you, the more I was just, wow, like this is just truth. It's and, like the more um, you give, the more I want. Can't get enough Wait, of your love, again? babe. Right on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I had just, um, really quick, I, okay, let me go back a little bit. I have come from the past of being, you know, everything you say about a woman, you know, just hell inside of me. And the whole time thinking that I was the righteous one, especially with my ex and my ex-husband. And now looking back, just after everything I'm learning, I just realized how I tore down that house with my hands. Yeah. And, um, but um, I'm married now, and um, my ex was a beta, and my husband now is a total alpha. And for the longest time, I was thinking, um, we've only been married for almost two years now. Uh, we've been through quite a lot, though. We've already experienced um, a death of our first child at birth, and I'm pregnant right now with our second, um, but he'll be our firstborn. Um, but I just would, you know, I've, I've had a lot of challenges with this man thinking that, you know, he doesn't love me, he's so hard on me, and <laughs> this and that, and, you know, and... <laughs> And now it just all makes sense, you know, it's just it's like perfectly clear. Like, I want him to be like that, you yes. know? Yes, yes. And he's nothing like my ex. My ex was just like an ass kisser, just a, ugh. <laughs> so, I, anyway, my mom told me about you, and um, I started listening. And coincidentally, um, but then again, there are no coincidences in our Heavenly Father, that I had just got done reading a book. I was told by your producers before I spoke to you that I couldn't really mention the book. But I just want to say that it's a book about um, how to be, basically, we're created as women, are to, um, created to be a helpmate to the man. Right. And so that's, so that's what it's about. And this book was a challenge for me to read. I finally got through it. 
Um, it's just it's so convicting, um, so convicting, just every second of it. I mean, she speaks truth, truth, truth. And, um, and then I was finally done with it. And then I thought, oh, I still need more, you know. <laughs> and then my mom told me about your station or about you. And so I started listening, and it's just so awesome listening to your perspective on the man's side, you know. And um, my mom, I know you're going to say you don't love her, but I do. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> but she, she definitely, growing up, she did not bring me and. Well, I don't, I don't want to speak to my sister, but she did not bring me closer to my dad. Um, uh, she always wanted to protect me from my dad, um, and she caused a lot of the strife, very yeah. emotional, Yeah. Um, you know, all that stuff. My grandmother was the same way, um, and it's just, it's so recently, you know, I heard... A video, you know, obviously I've been listening to a lot more since then, but the first one I heard about how you're supposed to call your mom and, you know, forgive her. Um, I, I called my mom afterwards, and I didn't really have the intention of actually forgiving her. Like, not, not that I was, I hadn't already forgiven her, but I wasn't really going to bring it up because she's so, she can be emotional. And so I called her just to talk to her, and I was going to talk to her about you. And so we're talking, we're talking about different, like, videos that we've seen of you. And then she goes, so, is there anything you want to forgive me for? And I go, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it was perfect. So I was led right into it. And I just literally got everything off my chest. I told her exactly, you know, what I believe she did wrong, you know, to to me as my mother. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of things that I can't say, you know, I... I, I, I am mad at her about because then, you know, I am who I am. But then at the same time, in token, you know, she she did create a, she did give me a lot of her hell that she had in her and from her mother. Right. Um, so, I mean, I had two abortions when I was in my early 20s that my mother told me I should get. And then it goes back even further when I wanted to, the first time I wanted to, um, had sex, and this was before I knew our Heavenly Father, but um, I I didn't know any better. I, I, I shouldn't say I didn't know any better, but I didn't know any better. I was young. I, I told her how I wanted to, you know, um, have sex with my boyfriend, and all she said to me was, well, as long as you go get a pap smear, that's all she said. Wow. And so... Um, I told her that, that, you know, you should have, I wish that you would have given, you know, told me how important it is to save yourself for your husband, you know, and how, you know, just all of that. And so she took it all in. She really did. She took everything in. And, um, it's just, it's ever since I, I forgave her like that, you know, it's, I really noticed that hell in me that I thought was gone. It really is just like leaving me. Like I can... I'm more tolerable to situations that are uncomfortable, um, yeah. that are, you know what I mean? Yeah. Amazing. So, sorry, I just spoke so much, but no. I just want to say that I... No problem. I, yeah. So, I, I, I appreciate everything you're putting out there. It's awesome. Um, I'm so grateful to our Heavenly Father that He has, you know, led me down this. He's given me this wisdom, and because it's terrible out there the women it's terrible yeah. <laughs> it's terrible yeah and i'm so grateful to not be associated with that anymore i mean i i hope i can say that i i i say that as sober as possible you know but um anyway are you yeah. are you doing my silent prayer you know i knew you were gonna ask me that <laughs> <laughs> um i i'm gonna answer you as as honest as possible i i to our Heavenly Father literally like all day long. So I'm not sure how it's different from your silent prayer. And if you could explain to me, please, like... Okay. Um, when you say but, you speak yeah. to the Heavenly Father all day long, what do you mean? Well, I'm just always asking Him for help in every situation. I'm always praising Him in every situation. 
um, you know, that kind of thing. Just, and why are you doing that? I, why are you I, carrying on like that? Why am I what? Why are you carrying on like that? Well, I mean, he's my, I believe he's my source. So I believe that I, I'm not going to sit here and talk to myself or anything. That was, <laughs> you know, I, I, I <laughs> so I mean, but, but when you do that, you when you do that, you're praying to the devil. When I'm praying, when you're like, Holy "Oh, Father, heaven, the Father, help me do this and do that," you worship in the devil and calling him God, and, and and because you have the wrong ideas, all of your ideas about God are wrong, and that's why when you die from the ego. The ego death, all of your ideas about God and about you and about other people and about situations, all of your identities you picked up over the years will disappear because they're just ideas that come straight out of hell from the imagination. And so your ideas about God are wrong, but when you sit still and he's going to bring you out of the darkness of your imagination, out of thoughts, and the light is going to destroy all of the thoughts, which are ideas, which are false identities, and all those feelings and all that, which are not you. And, and God will guide you. Your life will just happen naturally. You don't have to be asking. You don't have to be begging. You don't have to be running around thanking him all day. You're just thinking ideas, and it has nothing to do with God at all. That's why it well, hasn't I worked in the past. Well, I definitely know that in the past, past, no, it definitely has not worked. But as of lately, I understand what you're trying to say. I, I, I definitely understand what you're saying. And I'm not, I didn't mean that I'm literally speaking all day long as though as if one was talking to themselves, but I'm saying that I'm talking to him instead. I just mean, maybe, maybe it's more like as if I'm, I am, it's like his his like sc like scripture comes to mind or but then God just, said I'm, that we don't know what to ask for, right? So why are you doing it if you don't even know what you want? You don't know what to ask for. Of ourselves, we can do nothing. Why are you I, asking? I always say it's in your will. I'm I always sorry? say, Father, if it's in your will. But if you want His will to be done, you let go and let His will be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you're saying, you're, you're saying, let your will be done, but you still have all these requests. I don't, I really don't. Honestly, like my, my most recent request was that we have all of our storage stuff in our storage unit right now and we're about to lose it and we needed to come up with the money. And I said, Father, please, you know, if it's in your will, please help us to be able to make this. And he... <laughs> He created, he provided the way for us to be able to make it the very last minute. And Here's what I recommend. And you don't have to do it, but I recommend that you do your little, mm -hmm. your little hoop and hollering prayer, right? Like what you're doing. And when you're doing, um, when you, when you're doing, when you have finished doing your little hoop and hollering, do the silent prayer, be still and know God. Because according to Matthew, it says that your father knows what you need before you even ask. And so he already knows he's going to take care of you naturally, and it's going to be amazing. So do your little hoop and holler, and you know, God, let your will be done. And then <laughs> I once don't you do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <with you. laughs> and once you're done, do the silent prayer. Be still and know him. Okay, so so since I have you on the phone and you are the one that teaches that, please tell me exactly the silent prayer. <laughs> like, tell me what you mean by it. Okay, uh, I want you to go to rebuildingaman.com slash prayer, okay. and you can find it there, rebuildingaman.com slash prayer, right? And what? Mm -hmm. and, and now that you have gone to forgive your, your mother, your return, you forgave your father too, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I never actually... Okay. Yeah. I haven't asked him the question you said about why didn't you protect me from my mother. Right. Do you think that's really important? Like, No, I do you that? don't have to ask that. It's just that it just helps okay. you learn more about him. Right, right. But, but you don't have to ask that. Okay. But I have forgiven him. Right and on. I, yeah. Well, what decided, now that the light is on inside of you, the light, mm -hmm. which is happens when you be still, let go. You stop asking God for all this stuff or anything. The light 
is going to bring you out of the darkness of your thoughts. All thoughts, all lies, all the time about anything. You're not your thoughts. You're not guilty. You've never done anything wrong. You are not a sinner or a saint. You're not anything. But you think that you are because you have identified with all these things, right? But that's because you're living in your thoughts. Where the light now that you've risen is going to bring you out of the thought, which is the ego nature, which is the nature of the devil, and it will destroy that. It will take all those spirits away from you. And that's what God meant when he said we have once to die, once to live, and once to die. You're going to die a spiritual ego death, and then the real you will live forever. You have identified okay. with all these things. You don't realize how deep they are, but you start right. seeing it when you watch the not you. When you see those thoughts and stop calling them you, stop identifying, let them pass, they will be taken away from you because they're dark spirits. Mm -hmm. They're evil. Right. Okay. So give it a, um, give it a, tr give it oh, a try. Okay, I will. And... So let me ask you this. I'm not trying to Bible sound, I promise. But <laughs> <laughs> um, what about the, the scripture that says, "Make your request be made, make your request be known to God." And, and you are doing that when you want to know yourself, when you want to, mm. when you want to overcome the evil of your heart, the anger of the heart. Mm -hmm. You're making the request. He's mm. not saying make okay. a request for stuff, physical stuff. Like He's stuff, talking about right. spiritual things. Right. That makes sense. But the yeah. Christian thing, okay. he's Ooh. talking about physical, physical stuff, and he's not. He'll take care of that. Uh -huh. He said, don't even take thought about that. Right. Right. Okay. For sure. All right. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. So awesome. give, it, give it a try. You can always stop doing it if you want to. But, let, but give it a good try because you're on your way now. And the light inside mm -hmm. of you, the kingdom of heaven is inside of you. It's going to blow your mind when you see that you're not your thoughts. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate you so much. I really do. You're welcome. Let me know how it goes, all right? Okay. Okay, I will. And tell your mother I said <laughs> hello and right on for pointing you the right way. <laughs> I will. <laughs> hey, she, let me tell you, Jesse, my mom needed it just as much as I because, whoo, <laughs> she she didn't know how to be a wife either. Yeah. She did not know how to be a wife. Yeah. And that, that's what I had to see my whole life, you know? Absolutely. So, oh, but it's just such a blessing listening to your teachings and everything. So thank you. You're welcome. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. You For haven't sure. seen anything. Yeah. You're going to have a clear mind eventually if you stay with it. Yes. I, that is what I hope and desire. <laughs> right on. Thank you. I, I wish you well, Amanda. Call me again. Okay, for sure. All right, have a, have a great day, okay? All right, you too. Amazing. It's the same thing for everyone. You must die from the ego nature. You are not those things. Super Chat. Super Chat. Super, super. Super Chat. Aries donated a diamond, no message, over on DLive.tv. Thank you. Uh, someone bought a coffee. Biblical question response. What is hell? Hell is the absence of God's love. Amazing. Thank you. I'll put my two cents in on Sunday. Amazing. Matthew on YouTube, five coffees. How do you like your coffee, Jesse? Like I like my women. <laughs> White. <laughs> <laughs> no plan. <laughs> I'm just joking. But I like my coffee with a little cream. That's about it. Thank you. Big Chungus bought three mm -mm, coffees. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> Jesse, how do I get over my anger about get a job getting deleted by YouTube? I know. How sad is that? I mean, it's not sad, but I was just asked to hate about get a job yesterday. And uh, uh, But don't worry. Get a job is a tough guy. He'll be back. He will be back. Uh, he is on... I I did see him on uh, Rumble now. Oh, yeah. Get a job, too, on Rumble, actually. Uh, he, user. He was on Rumble at one point, yeah. and then he wasn't there. And now he's... Now he is back. So check out Rumble.com slash user. Get a job. 
Well, slash user slash get a job too. Oh, okay. Yeah, check him out there. But don't worry, get a job will be bad. Get a job is tough. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Get a job and thank you. Big Chungus wants to know how to get over his anger about that. Did what? you tell him? Did oh, you have, tell him how to get over his anger? Forgive about you that? too. Don't be mad at you too. There is never ever. I don't care what happens to you. There's never a reason to be angry. No, it, it should not make you angry. If it does, be glad to see that and overcome it. Amazing. So forgive you too. Amazing. Doug, Doug D bought five coffees. When is Uncle Tom 3 coming out? Love me some JP. Uh, go in here. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, I think they're working on it. I think they put on, they had talked about it at one time and they, they want to do something differently. But check out, if you haven't seen it, folks, check out Alcatraz 1 and Alcatraz 2. Amazing. Right Definitely. on, Doug D. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Doug D. Being enlightened until I rise, bought three coffees. Morning, gentlemen. Morning. This is a lo- This is not a pithy super chat. I think I'm going to have to hold it over until next hour, maybe. Make it pithy. Pithy. Did I say it right? Yeah, pithy. Pithy. You know, Sean, Sean told me Sunday is not pithy. Right. Okay, another white guy in my office corrected me. <laughs> <laughs> I had no way. Now another white guy is here. I'll be back in a moment. One more hour to go. The hate news, not the fake news. I'll be back. Steve, thank you for calling and thanks for holding. How have you been helped by the show? I'm going to tell you this. I believe you might go down in history as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, black man that ever lived on planet Earth, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know anybody before you that's been that great. You know, freeing slaves is one thing, but you've been freeing people of their mind, which matters. It should be, anyhow, to you more than anything else, because with the mind not being right, there ain't nothing else going to happen right anyway. If you can doubt every thought because you're not your thoughts, if you can doubt every thought Knowing that you are not your thoughts, you don't create them, they are not from God, that they're from the deceiver, the great deceiver, Satan. If you can doubt every thought, you can be free, just like that. At an instant, bring every thought into captivity. It's so amazing. There's a test of Biden's support in the Michigan primary today, they say, because Palestinian Rashida Tlaib's mad at his Israel support. Grocery prices through the roof, I hear. Social media is in the Supreme Court uh, this week, I guess. And a whole bunch of restaurants are closing. It's a mess. But the economy is great. This is the end of hour two of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It is Tuesday, February 27th, A.D. 2024. Country and Western Tuesday continues into hour three after fake news, not fake news. The lines are full, guys. Hang tight. JLP will be right back to your calls. Uh, after the Jesse Lee Peterson Show, thehakereport.com, live Monday through Friday, 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific. And then after that, Joel Friday TV, live Monday through Thursday, 11 to 12 Pacific time. That's 1 Central, 2 Eastern. And then, of course, American Anchor Baby, live right after Joel Friday at 12 roughly 2 uh, Pacific time, Monday through Thursday, and then 4 p.m. on Fridays. You can catch all of the uh, network clips from all of the network hosts by going to uh, JLP Radio Network on YouTube or IG. That's cool. Biden's support uh, amid Israel simping. President Crooked Joe Biden said he hopes there will be a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas conflict by next Monday, as you heard last hour. Sources familiar with the discussion say Hamas has backed off some key demands per Kami Nonsense Network, CNN, bringing the negotiating parties closer to an initial agreement that could halt the fighting and see a group of Israeli hostages released. In the United States, many eyes are on the Michigan primary today, which will in part serve as a litmus test on Biden's refusal to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. The Crooked Joe president, uh, his ardent support for Israel, but not Netanyahu, I hear, uh, has enraged a large block of so-called American progressives, meaning communists, many of them Jewish and also Arab Americans, 
most notably in and around mi- the Michigan city of Dearborn, which does not look like Dearborn used to, home to one of the largest Arab American communities in the country. The anger, anger is fueling a statewide movement among Democrat critics of Israel for voters to mark uncommitted on their ballots, led notably by that crooked woman, Rashida Tlaib, with her trashy mouth. She's Palestinian, but is in Congress in America somehow. Uh, Grocery prices. Inflation may be cooling, says Comment on Sense Network CNN, but many Americans are spending more on their income on groceries, more of their income on groceries than at any other point over the past 30 years, according to the BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics. Food prices remain much higher than before the scamdemic, they call it pandemic. Fresh vegetables are starting to come at a premium. Most notable price increase in produce aisles last month was for tomatoes, which cost 4.6% more than they did in January. Pretty big jump. Meanwhile, the United States government Monday sued to block a $25 billion deal between Kroger and Albertsons, alleging that the largest supermarket merger in the United States would drive costs even higher, so they claim. The merger announced in 2022 sought to con- combine dozens of chains, say, including Safeway, Vons, Harris Teeter, whoever heard of that, and Fred Meyer. What a mess. Social media at the Supreme Court, so-called Supreme Court's hearing arguments in two cases this week that could upend what we see on social media. The justices expressed sec- skepticism Monday about the state laws in Texas and Florida that banned censorship, censorship of political opinions. It was designed to stop social media's giants from throttling conservative views. Justices struggled with sweeping First Amendment questions about whether social media platforms should be treated like common carriers, such as telephone companies required to transmit content across their networks regardless of viewpoint. Texas and Florida laws prohibit online platforms from removing or demoting user content that express certain viewpoints. But for now, several of the justices appear... By several, they mean a few, appear to be angling for a potential outcome that would keep the laws on hold temporarily and allow lower courts further to review the impact on a wide range of Internet sites. What a mess. Don't trust the courts. And dozens of restaurant chains are closing their doors permanently due to slowing sales. But the economy is great, guys. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP, Hour 3. Somewhere in the world today, men have got to stand up strong, take the truth about themselves to understand what went wrong. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We also are rebuilding the family by rebuilding rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show already. What the? You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773. 888 jesse J E S S E, Jesse. My biblical question for this week the biblical question What is hell? What is hell? 
What is hell? The biblical question. We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're out and about, because we are heard around the world by everybody and their mama. But if you're black, everybody and they mama. But if you're white, everybody and their mama. Amazing, huh? Um, and also, if you're busy, if you're busy and can't do, you know, you just can't sit and watch the show live, you know you can podcast, but you can also be listening to it on the line, on your phone, iPhone or iPad, by calling the listen line at 641 793 one five zero zero six four one seven nine three one five zero zero and also follow us on social media like ring the bell subscribe y'all know what to do right uh we are on rumble.com slash jesse lee peterson and uh cozy dot tv slash jlp cozy dot tv slash j l p and to donate and have your comments read out loud go to buy me a coffee dot com buy me a coffee dot com slash j jesse j l p talk and rebuilding the man dot com rebuilding the man dot com um it's the last Tuesday oh no let me ask this first but Buell thing doesn't look right Oh, okay. Um, it's the last hour of the show for today. And every Tuesday, for those who are new, you might not be aware, every Tuesday is Bible Thumper. No, it's not. It is, uh, I'm being distracted right now, so I'm losing it. I'm black. I'm slow. It is Country and Western Tuesday. <laughs> Yeehaw. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my country to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to what me. What dog? <laughs> Who let the dogs out? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeehaw! Country and Western Tuesday. So it's the last Tuesday of the month. And some of you know, uh, who've been listening for a while, that every last Tuesday, we have your friend, my friend, everybody and their mama friend on the show. And pistolated. He's okay. He's okay with look like that, but tell him he looks silly. <laughs> we can't. There's nothing we can do. So yeah. Well, okay. So Bill doesn't mind looking pistolated. Yeah. Okay. okay, he doesn't mind looking pistolated. <laughs> <laughs> Am I saying it right, Sean? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have with me literally one of the smartest white men on this. Are you, and it, okay. it's kind of weird. Are you okay? Okay. You okay? I'm that? okay. You know, I, I wouldn't know what to do about it. So that's, <laughs> I'm going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I understand. Right. How you doing? Yeah. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How about you? All this well. 
I want to do something a little different um, before okay. we get into the borders and everything. It's a mess. I, and to the callers, I'm going to get back to y'all. I just want to talk to Bill for a few minutes here, and we'll get back to your call. Be patient. And your super chat. Bill, I have a, a weekly biblical question that I give out every okay. week. Uh-huh. And if, if you don't mind taking a stab at this, I would appreciate it, and the world would appreciate it. What um, What is hell? What is well, hell? Well, in the Greek Testament, uh, the word hell has been translated from the Greek Testament word, in some cases, Hades, which is simply the land of the dead. And that really is not the idea. That was the King James translation. But the hell really comes from the Greek word Gehenna. And we're told that it is a place of torment. We have that in Luke chapter 16, where the rich man was in torment and he lifted up his eyes and saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. We have uh, Gehenna mentioned in uh, by our Lord several times. He says, for example, uh, that people will be in danger of the hell of fire, Gehenna of fire. If they, of course, um, that is if they, in this case, in Matthew chapter 5, for example, he speaks about those who are, are cursing God and so forth and so uh, using curses. Um, but he uses the word Gehenna on several occasions. Uh, he does so also in Matthew chapter 12, I believe it is, where in uh, speaking about, uh, woe unto you, Chorazin, Bethsaida, and he says uh, they will be in danger of the hell of fire. Uh, so it's a place of torment. It's a place of punishment. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 4 speaks about angels that have been cast down to uh, in darkness, chains of darkness, and waited for the judgment of the great day. That would be the word there is Tartarus. So that's the idea. It's a place of departed spirits, but it is a place of punishment. And that's what the hell is. Amazing. I would love to respond, but I, I got to wait. I got to wait until Sunday before I put my two cents in. But thank you for that, Bill. I appreciate it. Yeah. And that's deep. That's very deep. So I'm being told, Bill, that they want you to move a little bit. Oh, hold on. It's fine now? Oh, okay. It's fine. You're sitting right. Okay. Um, so, Bill, I want to ask you, ask about the borders there in Texas. I know that the governor has been reported that he put wire around the borders. He's doing everything he can to stop the illegal aliens from coming in. I want to know your opinion about what's happening at the borders and is the governor of Texas doing a good job in stopping it from overnight in? Well, uh, I'll pick up the first, uh, the last part of the part of the question, that is uh, Joe Biden and his border crisis. So this is a purposeful invasion of the of the country of the United States. Yeah. And uh, it's purposeful. We know that it is purposeful on several counts. Number one, when Joe Biden came into office, he reversed by executive action all of this, all the uh, stop gaps that Trump had put into place, such as the stay in Mexico policy. He erased all of those. And there was hundreds of them that he did in order to facilitate people coming to this country. He stated when he was running for president that he thought that we ought not export people who are here illegally simply because they've crossed the border illegally. He tells us that over and over and over again. So then he erases all of Trump's border policies, and then he invites the world to come in here. I'll talk about the motives in just a moment, but one of the interesting things is that they, they do it clandestinely, so to speak, by the backdoor method through the United Nations. So the United Nations has... Uh, has an arm of it, which is regarding migration. And that uh, that migration arm of the United Nations, we have always given money to it to help people, supposedly. But Joe Biden has upped the ante over a billion dollars to give into that, that international organization sponsored by the UN. So what happens is they give people money. We, we are sponsoring the American taxpayer, our own demise, by funneling money to the federal government that in turn fe feeds it to the United Nations and the migration center in the United Nations turns around and gives thousands and thousands of dollars on credit cards and other 
uh, other expenditures to people in Central and South America and all over the world, over 120 countries, I believe it is, to come into the United States, and we are paying them to come here. Once they get here, our unconstitutional welfare system picks them up, and we, the taxpayer, pays for their hospitalization, for their schooling, for their housing, for everything that we might think about, and we pay all of the bills, and then that's what's happening. So that Joe Biden has actually fast-tracked it purposefully, all the while saying such absolute bald-faced lies as give me the power and I'll stop the border, yeah. which, of course, he could stop the border. But be that as it may, that's what's happening. As a matter of fact, one of the, uh, one of the border uh, czars in Central America by the name of Ortega recently stated very plainly, he says, what is happening is the United States is funneling the money to the UN, just as we said. And he says, we're seeing these people fast track through Central America, and they're all headed to the United States because they know that's where they get the free everything. So we've given money for them to come here. We're incentivizing that. And so we're incentivizing our own demise. Now, I want to talk for just a moment about the motivation for this. Okay. One of the motivations, if not the motivation, is that the Democratic Party hates Christian America. They yeah. absolutely hate it. And they call it, of course, white supremacy. So they go to the founding fathers. They were all white. So they hate the founding fathers. They hate the Christian principles on which, which we are founded. And the number one enemy, according to the Democratic Party, is white supremacy. Why, why do they keep saying that? Why do they keep harping on that tune? Because they see the resolving of that by bringing all the people from all of the minority countries in here who are poor and impoverished to come in here and to change the entire country of America. Not simply yeah. to get the Democrat in office. They hate white Christian America. And that's why they're doing it. Amazing. I want the United Nations, what's the uh, United, and you're right about that 100%. Was the United Nations set up? I remember I spoke to the United Nations some years ago there in, in New York. Was the uh, United Nations set up to end wars or help with wars? Because I don't, I can't find anywhere where they ever stopped a war or, or made a war work or whatever supposed to do. They don't seem to be any good. The United Nations was set up to be a one-world government from the beginning, from its inception. It was conceived, actually, in the time of Woodrow Wilson and his right-hand man, Edward Mandel House. Edward Mandel House pushed to get the League of Nations going, and Woodrow Wilson did the same at the, end, at the conclusion of World War I. So because there were so many, or there were several Republican conservatives in Congress that actually put a stopgap to the League of Nations, and that, that just angered Woodrow Wilson endlessly, and Edward Mandelhaus, who was himself a confessed Marxist. That was, that was Woodrow Wilson's assistant, Edward Mandelhaus. He wrote a book regarding Marxism. At any rate, he was a Marxist. He wanted to change America, and that is, of course, flood America with not only immigration, but also tax American taxpayers yeah. to spread the wealth around the globe. The League of Nations, we were able to stop. But so when that happened, they set up two organizations in order to bypass Congress and to get us into the one world government. And that would be, number one, the International Institute of Royal Affairs, I think was the name of it, that was in England. And then, of course, the one that is well known, and that is the Council on Foreign Relations in America. Those were set up in order to bypass constitutional government by and of and for the people. What happened was they had already put the, on the drawing board the United Nations. And so when it came to Franklin Roosevelt, who had individuals in his cabinet who were communist and communist sympathizers, such as Harry Dexter White and others, these individuals were able to craft, and with the approval of FDR, a a global, a skeletal government system. How do you sell it to the American people? How do you get the American people to buy into a world government that is run by 
the world bureaucrats who are controlled by socialists. Yeah. How are we going to do that? You have to sell it on a different point. And so they sell, sold it to the American people as a way to stop the wars. But people such as Harry Dexter White, as well as others, uh, stated very plainly, it was designed to reduce the wealth of America and to spread it around the world. And that is to the world socialism as one of them said, you know, we're not going to go with this system of uh, America is the best country and the devil take the rest of them or something like that. He made the comment like that. So what did they want to do? They wanted to take the money from the U S and spread it around the world. Have we done that? Absolutely. That's exactly what we've done. That's what Donald Trump has been crying about for all these years yeah. because we have, we have funded our own demise, but what is the plan of socialist government? What is the plan of the World Socialist Organization, which is, of course, headed the head of the UN was at one time, of course, the World World Socialist Organization head. What was his plan to create a world socialist government? Consequently, that's what we're seeing now. So when Joe Biden got into office, they said, you know, we're going to put this on the fast track right now. We're going to destroy this country more quickly because we saw Donald Trump in there and he stopped all of this stuff. Yeah. And so now we're going to make it where he can't even get into office. Maybe. And that's what's happening. So the United Nations was set up to be a world government that we have no answer to or we have no voice in. And it was sold to the American people as a peacekeeping operation. So it is interesting. It is I is it it's an irony that we have we have gone to war and we've stayed at war 100% of the time since the United Nations was established. Right. And we have lost every single war we've been in with right. them. We have never won a war since then. Now, I don't want to tell people, wake people up. So it seems as though everything is about money and power, and it's never what they tell us that our government, the United Nations, the leaders, it's never about what they tell us. It's always about self. It's about money and power. I want to know, is the United Nations located? Do they have like an office in all countries? Well, I, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure they have an office of some kind of outlet on all the countries. But of course, the headquarters in, in New York. Right. But, you know that. Yeah, right. But that's that's right. They do have uh, they do have organizations. I mean, it's it's a global organization at this point that we have uh, we have funded to the tune of billions and billions of dollars for taxpayer money to set up offices all over the globe. And so they, we've, they have United Nations armies who go in and help socialist organizations be set up. And th that's exactly what's happening. And so it's going on. So the UN says, you know, there's one great big lion that we've got to get rid of, and that's America. And we're going to defang it and declaw it. And here's how we're going to do it. And so that's what's happening now with the big, the big scam of flooding this country with people from third world countries who are going to be on a welfare program continually in spite of the fact that, well, I want to come here to work. That's no, they're, they're coming here because they get free money. They would not even yeah. be here yeah. if they don't have free money. They would not be able to come here and travel here without free money paid to them by the American taxpayer. I remember some years ago when I first started out, I was doing a speaking to about get out of the United Nation. We need to get out of the United Nation. And right. as a result, they invited me to the United Nation to speak. And I spoke to so-called world leaders from around the world. And I was surprised that after my talk, they gave me a standing ovation. And I was saying, we don't need to be in the, in the United <laughs> Nation. That they were no good. And we, don't, we shouldn't be taking care of that. But uh, is yeah. uh, Israel in the United Nation? Yes. Israel, so Israel part of it too? Right, right. I'm surprised the Jews are a part of the United Nation. Here's something interesting also, that we kicked out free China, Taiwan, the Republic of China, Taiwan. We helped kick them out so that we could admit red China, that is the People's Republic of China. We, we brought in r communist China and we got rid of free China. We did that. We helped orchestrate that. And we saw that we did that so that we could give them most favored nation status. 
So what does that mean? That means less trade restrictions. That means uh, less uh, <clears throat> less problems in tra free trade with other countries, less tariffs, those kind of things. And we did that so that now China, Red China, our enemy, our, and by, by the way, we did that when we started that pro process with Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon, who actually uh, went to Mao Tsung at the time, who was the probably the most brutal dictator the world has ever seen, up to 50 million people, some estimates are, 20 million at least, exterminated his own people, and we went to him and we wanted him to be a part of this global government, the United Nations. And Henry Kissinger helped set that up and start the ball rolling. And I think it was in 19 uh, or 2001 that Red China received, Communist China received the most favored nation status. Well, that means, of course, less trade restrictions, less embargoes. Let, we're, we count them as good friends. And so that gave them the avenue in. So the rest of the story is very simple. And that's why, of course, Bill Clinton was paid bukus of money by Communist China, just as Joe Biden is doing. And the Democratic Party is dirty on this completely in bed with China, communist China. Amazing. I saw from the New York Post, there was a report that the data shows that number of Chinese migrants crossing the southern borders near San Diego has exceeded the number of Mexicans. They have Chinese coming in now. And right. it, it, that's not, that can't be good for America, right? You know, those, those Chinese people that are coming in here, that, that is not good for America. Number one, they have been our enemy for a long time, and you, we are sponsoring the young men to come over here yeah. that are now going to gun ranges, long, long uh, gun ranges, long rifle gun ranges, and, and they're now targeting practice in California. So what does that tell you? that's what's happening with the Chinese people, the Chinese men that are coming over here. What are, what are they doing? What, and what we are sponsoring it. Well, Joe Biden is not going to say no because he's in bed with China. He's not going to kick them out of his bed. He's got money from China. And we, we all know that's to be the case. And yet we're here it is in this fourth year of his term. And yet we're just now getting to the bottom of some of what's going on with it because they, the mainstream media have down downfield blocking for him all the way. And the Democratic Party, all they can do is like, uh, well, look at Trump. He makes bad tweets. You know, he's he's ugly <laughs> in his tweets. I, You know, it's just it's insane what's happening. I saw a reporter down at the borders the other day and they were asking the Ill illegal aliens, who do you prefer? First, yeah. they asked, where are you from? And they were telling me the different countries they were from. And they asked, well, who do you prefer? Joe Biden or Trump? And they would say Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Right. They all said Joe Biden. They preferred Joe Biden over Trump because they know Trump is going to shut down the borders and not let them come in. And so they prefer Joe Biden. So it's the same principle as works in the big city, Jesse. And that is the Democrats have power in the inner city with minority communities because of the welfare system. Yeah. Once you start taking money from the American taxpayer or any person at all and giving it to another person, which is unconstitutional, immoral, ungodly, and wicked to steal from one person to give to another person, once you start that, then you have automatically purchased the vote of the recipient of that gift. Yeah. You're, going to, you're going to buy the black vote. You're going to buy, buy the Hispanic vote. You're going to buy the poor white vote. Anybody who receives government checks are not going to vote out of office a person who promises to give them more money. And so that's exactly what they've just they've just applied the same principle overseas. That's all they've done.
Okay, folks, welcome back. The Hake Report, the Hake Report coming up at the top of this hour uh, from 9 to 11 Pacific Time. And then join our Friday TV, He Black, at 11 a.m. And at 12 noon, the American Anchor Baby, energy given to him by God. So we got a good lineup for you every day. Um, I want to quickly, uh, before we let Bill go here, give out his information, and then we're going to get to your call. Bill, uh, your wife is not there to help you with your, with your hookup? Uh, well, she's here. Yes, she is. I, I did. Uh, I probably should have called her in here, and I would have hooked up a lot quick, <laughs> more quickly, and I might have a better pixels. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's your helpmate. That's uh, right. That's my helpmate. <laughs> um, tell the folks your website or whatever information that you want to give out there. Okay. Well, thank you, Jesse, for that. It's Patriotic Pulpit is the is a web uh, or is the uh, podcast that I do, and it is on Amazon Music uh, app. It's also uh, on Spotify app as well. You can find it on YouTube. So, um, Patriotic Pulpit. And then I have America, or Bible, rather, Bible studies with Bill Lockwood, and you can find that on YouTube also. I preach at the Iowa Park Church of Christ in Iowa Park, Texas. So you can go to that website, or you can go to simply Bible studies with Bill Lockwood, and you can find articles and sermons that I've been preaching there and have preached in, for a long time. So uh, those are the places. I have a website still. It's American Liberty with Bill Lockwood if you want to donate yeah. to the program. And there's a donate button there, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. Nice. I want to encourage you all to go to American Liberty with Bill Lockwood to donate and uh, help him out. He need it. He got a lot of work to do. It's tough out there when you stand up like this, so he definitely needs your support. Yeah. Bill, thank you so much for coming on. I totally appreciate it. You and, bet. Sure appreciate it. Love you, Jesse. And we'll have you back next next month. Yes, sir. Looking forward to it. And make sure your wife helps you with your pixelated. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get it pixelated next time with her. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> thank right. you, Bill. Bye bye. Bye now. Amazing. Bill Lockwood, folks. Donate at American Liberty with Bill Lockwood All right. Let me go quickly to Jeff, who waited a long time out of uh, Maryland. Jeff, thank you for calling. And thanks for holding you on the air. Hi, Mr. Peterson. Hey, uh, thanks hey, Jeff. for having me on. Yes, sir. And uh, Bill is a great guest. You should have him on more often. I it was know. Really enjoyable He's to listen to. He is amazing, man. He's amazing. Um, Hey, so you were talking about hell earlier, and I just wanted to talk what, to you about how it's... What is hell? Hell is the absence of God's love. What do you mean by that? I mean that it's... You can't feel God's love anywhere. Like, I live in Baltimore, and this city is just full of just crime and hatred and murder and just debauchery. It's uh, it's really gotten so out of hand. Um but the only thing that kind of keeps me going is the good book. And one of the verses that I keep reading to myself is James 5, 6, which is, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. So I and think we, that there is hope out there. Yeah. And when you say that keep you going, how, what do you mean? Explain how that keep you going. What do you mean by that? I mean, like... Uh, you know, for me, it's always about I got to get my sins out there. I got to confess what I've done when I've gone against God. And uh, I just need the public to know so that I can start healing. So I guess that that gets to my question of uh, when when you were on the H3H3 podcast the other Have day. You, let me ask you this first, let me you ask you this first before you uh, ask that. Have you forgiven your mother? Amazing. Hello? I wanted to ask about the Bible verse and forgiving his mother. Let me go to 888-7753-773. Let me go to first time caller out of Nevada. Ken, Ken, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello, Jesse. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. All right, great. Um, I have, I, I want to, uh, make a say something, and I want to answer the biblical question too. All right, are you on a speakerphone or something? 
Yeah, I'm about to get off of it right now. I was at work. Oh, so okay. I was just trying to give me a second. I'm going to take it off. There's no speaker. I appreciate this, Jesse. All right, go ahead. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Perfect. All right. So I want to answer the biblical question. What is hell? I believe hell is anywhere where you don't have peace. Anywhere you believe. don't have it. Amazing. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. Is. I put my two cents in on I have, Sunday. And I, have, but I want to say something, too. Is it all right? Mm-hmm. All right. So when I was younger, I didn't really believe in, in God or whatever uh, from the examples that I had. Cause I lived in uh, a church family, but, you know, like the they were, like, not really living the life or whatever. And I realized that... Um, that, you know, it's easy for people to be deceived or whatever. But, like, I was going to say is, like, I almost, like, I didn't believe in God for the longest. But then when I turned 18 or whatever, um, I, like, you know, forgave. I, I begged for repentance or whatever. And I've seen, like, my life take a change for the better or whatever. So, um, and listening to you has really uh, shown me that I am on the right path. So I just want to thank you for that. Um because, like I said, it's easy to be deceived um, by the world or whatever, and it'll take turn you away from God. Because even if, you, like, deep down in your heart, you know something ain't right, and then when you see people like pretending to be all about God, and then it'll drive you away because you'll be like, that don't even like you don't. It drives you away because you you see that they're not really being who they are. So that's what that is. And then I have one more thing to say. Is it okay? Yeah, go ahead. All right. And then as far as black people, like black people, um, cause I am black, um, black people need to like really wake up because like, and, and white people too, because I feel like white people are, um, they're being socialized to be treated like crap. They're like, they're like being, they're like, um, being set up to be the fall guy yeah. for it and everything. Yeah. And, um, and black people have, and black people like seem to forget that like great Britain was the first country to fight slavery <laughs> like that's a white country they black people also forget that white people were actually the ones who were fighting on their behalf in the civil war so but now they turn around every day and everything time you turn around they're telling white people that white people are to blame for everything and it's like if i if i were a white person anytime they if the perfect argument for that is when they tell you, when black people tell you that you're a colonizer, you're racist, your ancestors, y'all need to start telling them black people, like, actually, my ancestors were the ones that were fighting with the black people. You know what I mean? Because um, you got to, like, we got to find a way to kill off that argument of them blaming white people for everything because right. white people have been the greatest ally to black people. So black people need to really wake up and, and, and see that because. Ain't nobody been a better ally to black people than white people. You can't say Chinese people. You can't say Indian people. You can't say Hispanic people. All the other people that y'all fight for that don't like y'all. Um, y'all y'all said he complained about the white person, the person that actually ha probably has the most love for you. So that's what I wanted to say about that with the black people. That's amazing, so, man. Thank you, Jesse. That's amazing, and you're absolutely right. That's why I'm trying to encourage the blacks to start thinking for themselves. Don't be let some leader tell you how to think. Don't let the media tell you how to think. Don't let the preacher yeah. tell you how to think. Think for yourself. And once you start thinking for yourself, you'll get to know what the real deal is. You will know the truth if you think right. for and yourself. That's why, absolutely. And God has really blessed me with the vision of that. Mm -hmm. Because, like, even if you see, like, these famous people on TV, like, you got, like, LeBron James on TV talking about he's scared of the police. Like, get out of here. Like, <laughs> I know. It's like, stop it. How could this even be possible? It makes no sense. <laughs> right. And then, and then, and the, you, the black people have to realize that these black elites on top, they preach this victimhood to you. And they also sell you their image as being so holy because they don't want you to be on the same level as them. They want you to look up to them. Yeah. These are a whole bunch of power hungry people that, are actually just, they just want to be revered. They don't look, you know what I'm saying? They just looking to be revered. Yeah. And uh, that's the one thing that I also learned through when I, when I like beg for forgiveness and like stop stealing. Cause that was my thing when I was growing up, I was stealing, I was like adopted or whatever. Right. My parents weren't around and all that. 
Um, so, but when I turned 18 in jail, because every birthday up from like 13 to 18, I basically spent in jail. And when I turned 18, I was like, I told God, I'm not going to do it no more. I'm sorry. And I'm um, going to change my life around. And I really stopped stealing. It actually became embarrassing when I got out. I was like, embarrassed to steal. Right on. Um, Amazing. So he really, so I think he did that for me. But yeah, it's just like, um, and then what I see also is that when you are good, like you talk about like not needing for anything, I've seen that too, because I'm naturally like a solitary person. And um, I think I'm, I might be attractive or whatever, because like people, girls all like me a lot and everybody wants to be my friend or whatever. But when, I, but I feel like people have motives why they like you. So when I, because I don't really pursue friends. So when I, like when people see that I don't really need their acquaintanceship or or anything like that, then yeah. they then they turn on me because once they see they can't control you or you're not moved by anything that presents them, it, I see that in the human spirit it makes them start to resent you. Right on, and if they man. really like you and if they really like you, then they will start to hate you if you don't like them back. So that's deep. And that's what I've seen where um that's why like I, I don't really have any friends anymore. I used to have a lot of friends, but um I just realized that those are just people who like me for a That's certain right. way I was being. No such thing as friends. And do the are you doing the silent prayer? No, I've actually never done the silent prayer before. Give um, it a try at rebuild it just as you just continue what you're doing and do that mm -hmm. and see what you think because God will bring you totally out of your thoughts and he will take them away from you and give you a clear mind. And everything's going to open up for you even more so. Yes, sir. And that's what's happening for me in my life. Yeah. And I just wanted to, you know, confess that. And anybody that's listening, like, if you believed in God at one point, but you, you know, your pastor was a, a doctor, he was sleeping with everybody or scamming everybody in the church. If the His wife was a drunkard. Like, is you were just, like, you got gay pastors in your church. That's the devil. You're being led by the devil. The devil is sitting up there and he's pretending to be God or something, and y'all are following down that path that's leading y'all down into the Well, just because of time, I got to run, but do the side of the prayer. Let me know how it goes, all right? Well, dude, thank you, Jesse. I uh, appreciate you. All right, you too, buddy. Super chat. Super, super. Super chat. Super chat. Being enlightened till I rise with those three coffees. Morning, gentlemen. We was just walking through the valley of the shadow of death when I realized biblical question and answer. What is hell? That hell is whatever I'm getting a thrill from, because even though I can realize that I'm getting a thrill from it, that specific thing, if I try to do something about it, it just becomes two devils fighting, which is pure hell. Simply put, hell is your imagination. Hope that was piffy. <laughs> <laughs> it was. And thank you. I put my little two cents in on Sunday. Thank you. Soul Conscious Five Coffees, also with the biblical question response. Jesse? What is hell? Hell is having no peace, living in your thoughts, not forgiving your mother, anger, and a heart of stone. Amazing. Thank you. Soul Conscious bought a coffee. Hello, young man. Why do you do interviews with people who mean you no good? Then when you don't entertain them, they voice their opinion as if they got you. <laughs> Keep doing what you do. I believe in response to the biblical question. What is hell? Hell is us entertaining those thoughts. Amazing. Thank you. I'll put my two cents in on Sunday. Being Enlightened Till I Rise is a Rumble r supporter. You gotta know how to rumble. You can subscribe on Rumble and be a supporter. Merry Country and Western Tuesday. Amazing. Thank you. Urinal Chills. <laughs> also a Rumble subscriber on Jason Lee Peterson. What's wrong with the blats? Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Esoteric over on Kick says, What is up, G? Jason Lee Peterson. Nice. You got it. Thank you. Aries gave four diamonds. No message. Thank you for the support. Thank you. Shout out to Aries One, Stan Sixty Nan, WD Forty One, Zealous Hermit. Thank you guys for the support over on D Live. Thank you. And let me just check for any remaining coffees that I may have come in. Someone bought five coffees. Uh, and thank you, someone, for your coffees. You got to keep them clean, Mister Someone. Adios. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Let me see what I can get in here now. Um, let me go to Vicky out of Texas. Vicky, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Morning, Jesse. How are you? All is well. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Really well. I wanted to answer the biblical question. It's really fast and quick. And what, then I, I what wanted is, to ask you a question. What is hell? 
It's your mind. It's your thoughts. Clear, uncut, that's it. Stay out of your head. You'll be all right. Let God guide you. Everything's cool. Oh, amazing. Thank you. And I put my yeah. little two cents in on Sunday. And I have a question for you. Okay. Um, I, I This is our first night of the, I told you about the fireside chat with JLP. So it's our first men's night, Wednesday. Oh, it is tomorrow night. Sorry. <laughs> tomorrow night, Wednesday night. And I wanted to ask you, aside from sharing the silent prayer, which is just mandatory to do, um, what, because we're, the guys are going to be watching um, some Bond and some of your, sh- you know, your daytime talk show. But what could I share? What can we share with them? Like I've been going through video after video, ha- and they're all so good. I can't choose one or ha- two. Have a way, a wait and see. And- and okay. then secondly, yeah. always encourage everybody to forgive, and that can be the beginning of yeah. it. They got to forgive. Exactly. So that the heart can change from hate to love. Absolutely. But but have a way to see it. Just take it one step at a time. That's what we're going to do. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have right. a wonderful day, bro. We love you. Thank you. Love you back. Thank you. Oh, amazing. Uh, Doug is a first-time caller out of Virginia, Doug, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, my brother from another mother. How are you? All this well, sir. Oh, that's fantastic. Listen, uh, man, there's a lot that I mean, I, I wanted to talk about. Uh, one of them was um, I did uh, buy you some coffee and just wanted to do the plug for the Uncle Tom series. It was fantastic, and can't wait to uh, can't wait to see the can't wait to see the third one. But um, it was it was really neat seeing Bill. Uh, speak from Lotwood because I thought I thought I heard you say Wichita Falls and I'm like, huh, that sounds familiar to me. And then at the end, we gave his information. That little small town of Owl Park, Texas, is actually where I grew up. <laughs> amazing! <laughs> it is amazing. Nice. You can drive right through it. You can drive right through it. Not not uh, not only uh, you know it was there, but um, very few people realize um, about. The human agenda 2030, and it sounds very conspiratorial. Let me um, let me do this some... because of time. Duh. I'm about to run out here, and I'm trying to squeeze it a little bit more. I'm looking at the clock. Any, you have a question or something? Um, no. I basically, um, it was just, I was going into a monologue. I'm not going to lie to you, but <laughs> um, one one thing I do uh, one thing I do want to say is you really did get me going with the way that you like your coffee. I'm not going to lie to you. What that drew me to was a scene out of Blues and Saddles. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, man. Amazing. Amazing. Right, brother, God bless Call you. me again, all right? Oh, I will. Okay, thank you. 888-7753-773. Let me go quickly to Alexandria. Alexandria out of Illinois. Alexandria, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Sandra D. Hi, Mr. Uncle Jesse. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you very much. I wanted to call because I was listening to the show earlier, and there was a couple of things that I had problems overcoming, and I heard about these problems, you know, from these callers today. So one thing I wanted to share real quick is, number one, the ego. We cannot be egoless as long as we are living and kicking and breathing. But the thing is, is the spirit belongs to God and the ego belongs to Satan because we live in his world. That's one thing that I wanted to say. But why, why can't think, you be free of the ego while you're living? Um, how, how does one be free of the ego? You die from it. I could do that if I'm by myself solitarily and stuff and doing my silent prayer, but... When you're out there in the world de- dealing with all different types of people, okay, sometimes our responses are in relationship to those people. So I, we I, have to respond in some way or another. But if you die you know from I mean? the if you die from the ego, then you don't have to respond at all because you don't owe any explanation to anyone at all about anything. And especially to the children of the devil, because the children right. of the devil just want to hurt you. They're not trying to help you. They're evil, 
and they'll try to get a thrill. So if the ego dies, you you gotta you live on earth, so you gotta function with people, you gotta work with people. And if you let the ego die, no matter where you go or what situation, you won't be touched by it. I just don't know if it could die. How do how does it die? Do you know exactly by, how it dies? Yes, by you <laughs> by you stop identifying with it. You don't call it you anymore. You're not your thoughts. You're not your feelings, you're not your ups, you're not your downs, you're not an alcoholic, right. you're not a drug addict, you're not anger. Agreed. If you stop identifying with those, then they will die because they're all evil spirits. I agree. So consciously, I do not. You do not I what? do not identify, I do not label, I don't. I choose not to confuse myself. <laughs> then why do you believe that you can't die from it then if you consciously you're, wait, you're watching it? Because without an ego, we wouldn't be living beings. It's just something that I'd have to call you back on it. I'd have to do a little due diligence and then call you back to further discuss. So you believe um, that your ego is your, if you let that go, you wouldn't be a human being? Uh, no, personally, but, but why, because why wouldn't you, you past, you're not your ego, right? Well, I was going to tell you in the past, my ego, I judged myself, right? For a lot of different things. I was very harsh on myself. And then once I started working on myself, overcoming and still growing, right? Then I could recognize I have discernment and I also have what I believe an understanding of the ego is not going anywhere. We just need to tame it. No, that's lying to you. The devil is lying to you. God said that it will go. You must die from it. You're not your ego. And you have to die in order for you to live. But then what happens when the ego dies? And then like, when the ego... What kind of does I'm, that I'm procure? So <laughs> what? I said, what kind of uh, change does that... Dying of the ego procure. I take my hat off to you and your patience and your wisdom and everything. I'm just asking you personally, like, what does that do for, for when you? The, when the ego dies, the not you dies, the real you will appear. Because the only thing that the ego is a, a, a bunch of layers and layers of evil spirits in the mind and emotions. And so when all that dies... There would be nothing for you to identify with. So the real you will appear when the ego dies. Okay. Well, I will keep an eye out on that. All right. Um, I, got, I also... Look, call me again. I got to run. I'm running out of time, but call me again, all right? Gotcha. Okay. Have okay. a great day, guys. Me too. Bye. Bye. See that music sound low right now. Stand up and be true. Oh, now I got it. I, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I got it, Nick. Thank you. Line up, stand up. Thank you all. Get on that straight and narrow path. Get there, stay there, no matter what happens. Stay on that path. Really, do the silent prayer, forgive, so that the the mind, the thoughts, and the emotions can be destroyed. All right? It's not you, but you got to forgive so the heart can change. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, we'll finish the Super Test tomorrow if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. The Hake Report is coming up now from 9 to 11 a.m. The Hake, H-A-K-E Report.com. After the Hake Report, join our Friday TV. He black at 11 a.m. Pacific Time. And then the American Anchor Baby at 12 p.m. Pacific Time. The American Anchor Baby. All right, call us, Anthony and other callers that are hanging up. I'm so out of time. It's amazing. Get on that straight and travel the road by yourself. And when the devil sent his little spirits along the way, ignore them. Do not communicate with the devil inside of other people or inside of you. It'll be amazing. Thank you all. The HakeReport.com, A-T-K-E, is coming up now. Thank you for your support. Amazing!
So here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer. And I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it. And then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. I notice after a while that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business. But because they've been told that if you don't get a loan from the bank or if you don't have a five-year plan or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true, it's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663 and we're still committed to pointing the right way for men and women to return to the Father. 